All right, let's see. Hey guys, uh, welcome to twitch.tv slash Elpikachon. My name is Rodrigo. Uh, this is, as always, Smokey the Smoke Detector, my sidekick. And, uh, or, you know, if you're watching it, this on YouTube later, also welcome to Lopez Family Variety Channel. Hey, Harvestry. Uh, hey, Zemzy. It's good to see you guys. Uh, lurking during work stuff? Well, yes, today is a very, is going to be a very special stream as I am just going to be folding my laundry. <laughs> But I'm also going to be chatting with you guys. But I need, like, my laundry's out of control, guys. It needs doing. Um, and who knows? Maybe in this pile of laundry will be s interesting stuff to talk about. Probably not. I am serious. Oh. Good evening, Rodrigo and Smokey and everyone. Hey, St. JW. Thank you so much for the sub. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, we're just hanging out. I'm literally doing my laundry right now. But if you guys want to talk about something, just shoot. Um, I figured, hey, why not try to create content and also try to get some chores done at the same time? If I find anything interesting in here, I'll, I'll definitely point it out. But so far, it's mostly just like pants and socks. Hart says, chatting while doing a manual task. That's a pain to do on its own. Well, I have never, right? I'm I'm basically co-opting you guys to be my like laundromat friends. So yeah, if I find anything in here, I'll talk to you guys about it. I'm not going to talk to you guys about my wife's clothes cuz I didn't run this by her ahead of time. So, we'll see. Um Harvest just has a little bit of fashion peak. Laundromat chat has a good ring to it. Yeah, uh, think about it that way. It's like a laundromat chat. Um, what is going on nowadays? Uh, hey, did you guys hear about this one? You guys hear about this? You guys hear about those Magic the Gathering stickers? You hear about that? So, uh, people are up in a huff. There's lots of magic stuff going on right now, but people are up in a huff about um, the new unset um, and oh, you're noticing a little bit of a lag. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll catch up, but it happens. Um, also, I got my fan on, so hopefully you guys can't hear that, but if you do hear it, let me know. Um, so, uh, the new, okay, so let me start from the beginning just in case people don't know. So, you got, you know Magic the Gathering where you, like, cast spells and summon dragons to fight your, uh, fellow players? So, every once in a while, Magic the Gathering does what has become known as an unset. Unsets are, like, joke sets, so they have mechanics that don't work very well in other stuff like some sample mechanics have been like if you catch your opponent saying a word your cards get power-ups or if you catch your opponent's like hands on the table like your cards you know you get like better effects from your cards or whatever so it's goofy stuff like that uh they have like art matters like uh by like whoever the artist is if you have multiple cards by the same artist that like powers them up um, yeah, Zemzi's right. They, these are just silly sets. But here's the thing. The latest unset is going to have some legal cards for Vintage, Commander, and I want to say maybe even Modern. Definitely for Commander and Vintage. And, uh, what's that other format that's, like, super old? Um... Anyway, it's going to have some cards that are legal outside of of the unset. And uh, 
people are upset about that primarily because it's very hard it's kind of hard to tell like cards that are not legal outside of the onset have like an acorn or like down at the bottom where the little hologram is it'll be a, a, an, an acorn instead of a um instead of like just a little oval so the main people the main thing that people are upset about uh, as far as this is is like some of the cards in the unset have a mechanic that uses stickers like it comes with a little sticker sheet and you peel off the stickers and the stick stickers like for example it'll be like a power and toughness sticker so you can turn your critter into like a 5-4 because you have a 5-4 sticker you can peel off the sticker and stick it on your you know lanawar elves and they'll be super big and beefy uh, malone hasco says hi guys getting a bit of uh getting a habit of catching these streams live that's good i'm glad glad to have you around um harvest says oh yeah they use munchkin type rules yeah they kind of do use munchkin type rules yeah um Sinjadulu says, I like MTG. I'm not a fan of how it's sold. I mean, that's a good point, right? And that's what we're getting at here is that unsets have never sold particular, like as well as other sets, right? Like, in fact, they sell less. Uh, lots of people like them. Lots of people buy them. Um, but in general, they're this thing that WotC or, or, and or Hasbro looks at and says, well, we're losing money on something like this. So... That's why they're making the, the cards in the unset legal and what they're probably going to put powerful cards in there so that you're kind of forced to buy it if you want those cards, right? So, yeah, people are all up in arms about that. Um, uh, Wizards has been trying a lot of stuff with things that come from outside of the game. So if you guys played any of the D&D uh, &D set, um, Venture Into the Dungeon, right, kind of requires, like, these little, like, dungeon cards that exist outside of the game for you to track where you are in the dungeon. Um, and kind of same thing with, like, Day and Night. It kind of requires you to have, like, this little card that tells you what, what happens in, in Day and Night or whatever. Um... Little Billy says, I heard there might be Lancer stuff, but magic among my skill set. Yeah, if you guys want, I can do... Uh, we talked last session about doing a Lancer tier list. So here, once I start denting my laundry, we can get into that. But yeah, so... Like, people are really dreading, like, having to use, like, stickers in their commander games or have to worry about it. Because that's the thing. Once a... Once a a mechanic is in it's in right it doesn't ever go away fully so you have to like if you're playing commander or you're, if you're playing legacy or, or vintage or whatever um and you are going to these events to play with strangers then you have to know and you have to worry about what the stickers are gonna do right um if you play amongst your friends you can usually bully your friends to stop using mechanics you don't like um, that's kind of I think that's kind of how groups work. It's like once uh, once people get tired of like losing to like disciple of the vault, you can just tell your your old fogey uh, fellow player uh, don't run that deck again or I will physically beat you up. And so those things work themselves out, right? But you can't do that in a tournament. So people are kind of upset about that. I am I'm not playing magic very much nowadays. And if I do, I'm mostly just playing against my wife. So I don't think we're going to buy into the unset. Um, so we'll see. Obviously, all of these things are really mitigated by Magic Arena, right? And potentially Magic Online. Um, because the computer just does it for you, right? I was not surprised, but I was alerted recently that a lot of people really hate the day-night cycle from uh, the last Innistrad set because you have to keep track of it and you have to keep track of it even if there are no more cards that care about it on the board you still have to keep track of it in case new cards that care about day and night come into the 
come into play, right? So uh, people are like, oh, I hate having to do that. And I, I never thought about it because I've only ever played it online. So the computer takes care of all that stuff for you, but playing it on paper can be a real hassle. And I can't imagine how much of a hassle it is. It's going to be to be putting like stickers on things and then like taking them off and sticking them on and taking them off. It's going to make your sleeves all pasty. I don't know. Uh, Malone says, interesting. I'm old enough to have been following MTG from afar since the beginning. Just never got into it. Partly because just couldn't justify the cost of Warhammer and magic. That's fair. That's kind of why I'm not into Warhammer. Uh, Harvestry says, it's so important in a long-term relationship to share fun activities together. Really keeps the magic alive. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. Um, Zemzi says, uh, in uh, FNM, I watched an Elixir of Life versus Elixir of Life. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can get into these matchups that are like really like really gimmick heavy right it's like venture to the dungeon is a gimmick um flip cards are a gimmick right so you get into these things that are just like just gimmicks stacked on gimmicks and it like it just becomes very complicated so yeah it's like in one deck there's nothing stopping you from having uh, a day night cycle venture into the dungeon and also stickers right so so we'll see. Actually, that would that seems like kind of a funny deck idea to do online. Not not in person, but online that would actually probably be pretty funny. Um, Saint Jadol says, same here. I love my Warhammer. Only really do MTG Commander now due to the cost. Sure. Uh, Horse Pawn Mine is here. Um, Horse Pawn Mine says, I've been really digging all the indie miniatures games out these days. You can buy cheap minis from any company and use them for plenty of different games. That's good. Yeah. That's fun. I should, uh, for those of you that are just showing up, I should let you guys know that I'm folding laundry right now. So you might, uh, you might catch a glimpse of something I'm folding. Do I have anything? Let me see it. Like I, I have like a bunch of like print t-shirts. What's this? Oh, this is my Muppets t-shirt. Uh, they're doing like a little Abbey Road thing, the Muppets. Those guys are funny. Uh, Harvester says, actually, that does remind me of the fun modularity of Munchkin and mixing in different expansions. Yeah, Munchkin is fun because that's what Munchkin is built on, right? Munchkin is, you are supposed to get these like monstrously wacky like interactions and that's that's the point of it right but in magic especially because my ma people take it so seriously you know people like there's people that make their livelihoods from magic so they're aggravated about it and and that makes sense um classic muppets oh good i'm glad you guys love the muppets uh, Horse One Man says, I want to get a Muppets tattoo one of these days, but I can't decide what to get. I'm I'm really happy with the the level of enthusiasm you guys have about the Muppets, because I'm a big Muppets fan. Um, Lil Billy says, Commander decks can be 99 plus 1 cards, and there's no duplicates, so just jam one of everything to cover as many gimmicks as possible. Sure. I think we've all played against that deck, right? Where, like, it's just... Uh, just wacky cards after wacky cards. So yeah, you definitely can put as many gimmicks as possible. The the part of the issue with the gimmicks though is that they're they're what R and D calls parasitic, which means they only play well with each other. They don't play well with other stuff. I, I think this is kind of what like stickers is trying to do, right? Stickers is trying to make a gimmick that affects non sticker based cards. So I mean that's fine. Um Fozzie Bear tattoo, sure. Uh, if I were to get a Muppet, Muppet tattoo, says Harvestry, I might like to get Stadler on one shoulder and Waldorf on the other on my back. Yeah, that make that that's actually pretty funny. Um, if I was to get a Muppet's tattoo, I don't know what I'd get. I like a lot of the Muppets. Maybe I would just like. I would just get like a really 
fancy like electric mayhem tattoo not the characters just like yeah just like the electric mayhem like it's a band i like i mean it is a band i like but um yeah and then if people saw it they'd be like oh i don't know that band you know and i'm like oh they're real good you should hear their cover of kodachrome um Harvey says, Animal seems like a good Rodrigo match to me. Yeah, Animal was was my favorite Muppet for a long time. Um, I definitely identified with him because I also play the drums and I'm also covered in hair. So I was uh, I was definitely a big... Uh, or, and I am. I still like Animal a lot. I just like... As I've gotten older and honestly, once I started running Critical Hit, uh, you know, back when I was running the Boyd Saga, I was like, wow, I really identify with Kermit. Like, trying to herd a bunch of, like, creative weirdos into, like, trying to do a cohesive thing. I'm like, yeah, I get it now, Kermit. I know why you're always freaking out and waving your arms around, right? So, yeah, definitely. You know, it's kind of vanilla to be like, Kermit is my favorite Muppet. But he's become my favorite Muppet by default. Because I'm like, sometimes I'm looking at my life and I'm like, oh, I am Kermit. <laughs> so... Maybe not so much anymore. Uh, you know, now that I'm not running it, maybe time has passed and it's time for me to once again select a new favorite Muppet. But uh, definitely, by default, uh, Kermit is my favorite. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Horse Point Mind says, uh, Very unfair of Jim Henson to be able to be so talented that the Electric Mayhem is just a good band. Yeah. That's how I feel. Is like the Electric Mayhem is just a good band. Tenacious D is just a good band. Like a lot of bands that are supposed to just be jokes. Um, the the I don't know if you guys ever watched those like bad lip reading videos, but it used to be. Now they've gotten into doing more like comical, like people say nonsense stuff. But it used to be that they would like. Um, wow, that was a terrible folding job. It used to be that they would do like take a music video and write a whole song based on the mouse moving and they wouldn't use the same song right so if they're using like like one of the things they had is like Miley Cyrus party in the USA and it's like they weren't using the music for party in the USA they wrote a whole song that would match up with like the weird things that they were having Miley Cyrus sing. It's really good. Like I find that to be really good. It's like exactly what you want out of like when they're like uh, to to have something when you when you take a piece, if you just copy it or if you plagiarize it or whatever, that's bad. You need to transform it. Like I like I always saw that as like taking a music video it's like music videos are based on the music, right? Like that's the base. It's like taking out the base and just using the skin to build a new base. It's like really smart and cool. Um, and I'm like, yeah, those were actually really good songs. That person has gotten away from, from doing that. And that's fine. They can do whatever they want or whatever is like most lucrative or gets them more clicks on YouTube. But yeah, definitely the early... Uh, the early bad lip readings were like were really good, good songs. Um, Sinjadilu says major spoilers. A herd of creative weirdos. That is kind of what we are. Uh, Horsepoint Mind says I just started Legacy of Ghosts on my re-listen. I can see that. Sure. Uh, Harvester says it's uh, the deeper hit Kermit rather than Surface. Yeah, definitely. Less like oh, who hired this crew, and more like. When he looks like, when he's like, ah, you know, that's, that's me, Kermit. Uh, Harvey says, that sounds dope. I do get like, once your shtick finds success, putting that much time and energy into the work you do makes it much harder to keep up and stay relevant. Yeah, definitely. I, and I think people like it, like bad lip reading. It's a YouTube channel. And just look up bad lip reading um, on YouTube if you want to see it. Um, they just did a five part thing with Hamilton. Where they're like taking stuff from like the stage musical with Lin Manuel Miranda with the original cast, and they are bad. They're doing a bad lip reading of that, but it's mostly just like weird sounding sentences and stuff. 
um, they're not they're not doing a lot of songs. They do very few songs in that. So I watched like the first couple parts, and then I'm like, you know, I like bad lip reading for the music. Like I think the person that does it is like actually a very talented musician. And I'm like, I, I I'll come back for something that's music. Like I'm not like, er, do more music, do whatever you want, right? But I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm not interested in this. Uh, Lil Billy says, I know them purely through Star Wars songs. Yeah, that's right. Uh, probably, like, the biggest thing they're known for is that Seagulls song, right? Run, 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 jump. I can be a backpack while you run. Yeah, that's that's the bad lip-reading guy or crew. I think it, I really think it's only one person. Um, and yeah, they've, they've done a few. They, they did a song for the, like, to the Hunger Games. Like, uh, it's like when Katniss and Peeta, like, give a speech. And they they made a song about that or, or, or with the lip reading, and that was actually pretty good. Again, it's like whenever they whenever they do actual music, I'm like, oh, cool! Like this music's actually decent. Like this person's good at good at it. But you know, they don't do it as much anymore, which is fine. Now uh, let's see. Well, do you guys are you guys interested in the Lancer tier list? Should we switch gears and do that and go back to laundry here in a bit? I'll just change this. Still just chatting. Uh oh. Nathan, reckless attack. Thank you for the follow. Okay. All the mechs that make you cry, yeah. Hey Nathan, good to see you. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming by. It is Rodrigo. It's me. Also, here's my sidekick, uh, Smokey the Smoke Detector. As always. All right. Let me change over to something else. So, as you can see already, my captions. My captions are generated through a um, through a browser thing, so if I use my browser, they go away. So just so you know, the captions are going to go away, unfortunately, and I don't know how to get around that. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll send a tweet out as well. Twitch dot nope dot TV slash L B John. There you go. All right. Where are you guys? Oh, here we go. Um, Zemsi says, speaking of Lancer, I stumbled across a podcast. Oh, a Lancer podcast. That's cool. Uh, Little Billy says, Lancer has been on the forefront of my mind for the last 10 days or so. Two Sundays back, our team's Enkidu pilot went down in a meltdown. Rad. I mean, if you're piloting an Enkidu, that's how you want to go, right? You want to go guns literally blazing, and also your skin blazing and your organs blazing. Pride, hate, pride, you woo. Woo! Hey, Zal, what's up? Thank you for the subscription. I really appreciate it. Did you guys see that? That wasn't like... That bounced really far. Oh, Lancer 101 quickly. Okay, yeah, you're right. All right. So what is Lancer? Lancer is an RPG like Dungeons & Dragons or Vampire the Masquerade. Um, in, But in this RPG, you play a pilot that uh, pilots a super cool, mega advanced uh, mech. Right, so mostly generally humanoid giant robot. Um, this is much more a game of mechs versus mechs, a la Gundam, and less a game of mechs versus kaiju, a la Pacific Rim. But you can get kaiju in here. Um, it's also a game that has a, a deep lore 
and a lot of interesting things about it. It's not like a generic mech game. You can't just be like, I want, I'm going to use Lancer to play Gundam. I mean, you can, but you have to do a lot of work. A lot of the mechanics and the way that things work are based on the thing about on the things about Lancer. So what are some of the things about Lancer? One, paracausality. Paracausality causality is like a scientific mumbo jumbo term for basically magic, things that we wouldn't expect. It basically means like the cause and effect of something is like weirdly divorced. And so you can like teleport or cause like something to like light on fire or, you know, move backwards in time due to using like paracausal studies. Um, another thing is NHPs. NHPs are basically the AI in this world. And technically they're not AI. Like people are going to jump down my throat. But that's the, that's the space they occupy. But what they really are is like sort of like multidimensional math demons. Um, and basically humans are friends with them, but also humans like have to like lock them up in like a little box that they plug into their mechs um, or into whatever. Um, because otherwise NHPs start to run, like spin their gear so hard that they're... Um, their frame of reference stops being like a human frame of reference as there's being like a cosmic frame of reference at which point they stop caring about human life altogether and terrible things happen like even if they don't do it on purpose an nhp uh changing their their focus from a like minute by minute human centric focus to a cosmic focus is is bad <laughs> Magnus is going to derail us today by making Rodrigo open Pokemon. <laughs> yep, that's right. We're trying to talk about Lancer, so we're going to get derailed by playing an entire Pokemon game. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nathan says, bring your own mech is great. Good folks, too. Oh, that's good. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll look into it. Uh, Zell's eating lunch. I uh, think only Lagnus and I knew Modesty Blaze. Yeah, Modesty Blaze is old school. Like, I was not... I, I don't think I had ever read any Modesty Blaze. We we looked at Modesty Blaze in the Major Spoilers podcast. You can go to Majorspoilers.com and look on the podcast, and you can hear me talking about comics if this doesn't tire you out. Um, a better Gundam sim for tabletop RPGs as Remnants. There you go. Um... Hopefully more people read Modestly Blaze after that. It has some entertaining stuff. Uh, Modestly Blaze is actually the best newspaper strip that I've read as part of the Major Spoilers podcast, with the possible exception of Calvin and Hobbes. But they're very different. You can't really compare the two. Um, like it says, yeah, it ran in my morning newspaper, but most I read in albums and comic books. Okay. Oh, it ran in your newspaper. Okay. I thought you said that it rained on you. Like, you opened your newspaper and it started raining. It's like, so I never got to finish that strip. Uh, Nathan says, have you ever read Kill Six Billion Demons, the webcomic? Yep, I have. Yep, we've read. I've read uh, Kill Six Billion Demons. I'm not caught up with it. I I read a bunch of it and just ended up dropping it because life happened. And I haven't gone back because I know that in order to go back, I have to start from the beginning. And you know how that is, right? I just kind of haven't taken the jump to sit down and start reading again from the beginning. But yes, Kill Six Billion Demons is really cool. If you pick up Lancer and you're like, wow, this art is awesome, you should check out Kill Six Billion Demons, which is uh, done by the guy who does the art for Lancer. And also who, and also that guy is a part of the Lancer team. So um, the, um, the mechanics and, and lore and stuff are also, like he also works on that. Um, Lil Billy says, I gave it a look, couldn't keep a regular pace, but it was super impressive. Yeah, it's super cool. Uh, and it's still going. Yeah, definitely. It's in book five or, or six. Oh, book five of six. Yeah, okay. Uh, Nathan says, I actually talked to Tom for a podcast episode. He was great. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, the Lancer guys are like super cool. Um, <laughs> we did have a thing. A while ago, where like Tom like threw some shots at, at Morkborg, but I think that's mostly cleared out. Okay, so that's Lancer. In Lancer, you get these things called licenses. So, um, a an individual license. Uh, let me see if I can show you guys CompCon. 
So an individual license is composed of three levels, right? So let's look at the, let's look at the Vlad license. So you'll get rank one of the license, and then later on you level up until rank two and then rank three of a license, right? Um, so rank one of a license will usually have like a weapon or a couple of systems. Rank two is when you get the frame. So once you get to rank two, you're able to use this mech, right? Instead of like the starting mech that everybody gets. Now there are technically two, two starting mechs, but in the base, there's kind of just the one. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be talking about both the mechs and the licenses, right? Um, because... Uh, some of the mechs are good, but their licenses make them that much better. Some of the licenses are good, but the mechs themselves I don't love. So that's kind of where we're going with this. Um, and I've made my tier list rather than uh, separating it by like power level or, or like gameplay loop or whatever. This is all like my opinion. So the way this tier list works is... Somebody has asked me to to be in their game of Lancer, right? So the first tier is, can I play this mech, right? These are the mechs that I'm like, oh, 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 let me play this, right? The next level is, I can play that. Like, I, you know, I, like, in fact, let's add gladly, or I'll gladly play that. There we go. Yeah, I'll definitely play that. No problem. Right? The next tier is... Well, I'll play that if I have to. Right? It's like if somebody comes to me and says, I need you to play this mech for to, 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 to get our team comp together. I'd be like, well, I'll play it if I have to. And then the last one is, I'm busy that night. Right? These are mechs that I like absolutely do not want to play. They, mostly because I find them boring, but uh, I don't think there's like a mech where I'm like, I find this objectionable. It's mostly like, this is a boring mech. Okay. Black, let's see. What are people saying? Da -da -da -da. I haven't seen, have you guys played Lancer and Critical Hit on any side things? Nope, not yet. But uh, maybe, maybe we'll play Lancer at some point. Uh, you know, Critical Hit is like very stratified. You know, we're trying to go for... We're trying to do short games and long games, so uh, it might be a while before we see Lancer. Um, Lagnus says Black Witch is S tier. Debuff them all. Black Witch is a good mech. All right, so let's get started. So I, I set up this thing in by company order. So there are four, technically five, but four main companies in Lancer. Um, IPSN, which... Um, basically uh, makes um, machines for space travel and like mining and things like that like very work work oriented mechs and then has turned around and oh the Genghis is in the wrong company what are you doing over there Genghis um, so yeah they've turned around and turned their like like, the Vlad is a, a mining mech, and they've turned that into a weapon, right? So that's kind of their, their deal. All right, so let's get started. But, be, oh, yeah, so there's IPSN, then there's Smith Shimano, which is a company that makes kind of, like, more deluxe and more out there mechs. They are, they have, a, like, an exotic materials department, which is where some of the, like, invisible and, like, ferro fluid based ones come from. Um, they also have messed with Blink Space, and they've also messed with uh, Meta Vaults, right? Which is where you can get a lot of, like, the weird magic stuff in Lancer. Um, and then after that, we have Horus. Horus is a uh, company of, or it's a group, it's like a decentralized group of space hackers. Nobody knows what, like, Horus's true purposes are. They just know that, you know, they're out there helping people basically being what kind of what anonymous wants to be uh, except they also make mechs 
and you can download their mechs if they let you. Um, and yeah, I do mean download their mechs because in Lancer, mechs are 3D printed. Uh, let's see. Um, Lightness says, I hope someone is read to add quotes with the add quote command. I'm in bed, so I'm counting on you guys. We all know Rodrigo will be very quotable tonight. Yeah, I, I probably will be. Um, it's Genghis Khan, not Genghis Can't. Yeah. Uh, Malone says, I have no idea about actual rules, so I'll ju judge your choices by name, looks, and coolness of, of gimmick. That's basically what I'm doing. So that's, that, we'll, we'll, we're fine. We're on the same wavelength. Uh, you wouldn't download a mech. <laughs> yep, that's exactly right. Uh, and, and there is a way to pirate mechs, like pirate mech pattern groups. So, yes, you actually can pirate a mech. Uh, Lagnus says, what mech is the most like a Pokemon? Uh, what mech is the most like a Pokemon? I guess it depends of what... Of, of how you think of Pokemon. Um, probably the Hydra is the most like a Pokemon trainer. Because you can just keep throwing out drones. And each drone is different and does different things. Uh, the Goblin... Is the Goblin the most like a Pokemon? We'll think about this. These are the things that we will ponder as we get to this tier list. Okay. Let's get started. So there are two mechs. Or originally just one. But with uh, the release of No Room for a Wallflower. There are two mechs that you can use at the very beginning. Before you start getting license level. The Everest and the Sagarmatha. Um... The Everest is a very good mech. It, it's like really good. And why is it a picture of a mountain? Because they don't give you a picture of the Everest. You're just supposed to make the Everest whatever you want because it's the most common mech in the galaxy. Um, so yeah, I will gladly play the Everest. It doesn't go here because it's the starting mech. If you play Lancer, you've played the Everest. Like, it's just like the, the, the novelty of it doesn't last very long. Uh, the Sakar Matha is okay. I don't love it. So definitely, if they're like, hey, we need something, like, bulky. Um, and, like, bulky and buffy, I guess. It's like, well, I, if I have to, I'll play a Sakar Matha. Everest is a great name for a mech. Yeah, it's, it's also very, it's like an incredibly fast mech. Uh, oh, man, now I want to play Hydra and just name all my drones. Sure. Uh, Lil Billy says, I wonder if the Future Core supplement could add GMS standard mech frame that's one half size, like most of my favorites. Uh, probably not. Like, they very much on purpose have a very limited amount of very small mechs and very large mechs. Um, yep, it's the first one that everyone uses, so it's not the peak mech, eh? Yep, nope, that's right. <laughs> Good job. Um... Lagna says, but I only get to run, not play. It's like, I guess that's me too, but I've already seen a bunch of Everest. Okay, let's keep, let's start with the IPSN mechs. Vlad. The Vlad is, I'll gladly play. Would make it up, so the, Glad's, the Vlad's deal is that it's full of spikes and it spikes you into the ground, right? When you talk about, like, control for, like, other mechs, like, Horus and IPSN are like, oh, I mess with your systems. Or I, like, create singularities that pull you in. The Vlad is like, I shoot a stake through your foot, right? That's kind of the, st the, the, the Vlad's deal. It's a very spiky mech, and I'll gladly play it. Uh, the Blackbeard, also I will gladly play. The, the Blackbeard is cool because it's a grappler. Like, this is a system where grappling is easy and fun and gives you opportunities to do other stuff. So this is like the big grappling mech. Um, it's not my absolute favorite, but it's very good. Also, I think it might be the only IPSN mech that gives you an NHP, which is Segment, which is funny. Segment is like, basically, if you want to play Barbarian Rage where you don't have full control of your mech, uh, Segment gives you like extra attacks and you can and you can do that. Like it just, like Segment has a, a list of things that is like, if no one is around, move towards the nearest thing. If someone is around, crush him, right? Kind of like the the, the, tier, the the list of things that it wants to do. Um, Harvester says, Lancer sounds like a game that would have some baller miniatures if there were an official line. Though I also don't know how much of the game itself would benefit from physical miniatures. It would, because it's a tactical game, so... Um, 
it's it's played on a hex grid, so as much as any other hex grid may is made. Segment has a murder flowchart. That's right. Segment, in fact, does have a, a murder flowchart. All right. The Zeng. Uh, okay, so the Zeng is an I'll gladly play because I love Zeng's systems, but I don't love the, the mech itself. Um, but the Zeng is very good. The Zeng has the giant fist. So this thing back here um, that didn't make it into the frame, that's like an enormous like smash fist. Um, that does, like, an immense amount of damage if it hits, and actually plenty of damage if it doesn't. So, it's pretty good. Uh, the Landcaster is I'm busy that night. I don't know what it is. Like, I don't hate support mechs or support characters or whatever. Um, there's just something about the Landcaster that's, like, very boring, and I think really what it is is that, like, as a support mech and as the... Um, the IPSN support mech, it has to be, like, very physical. Like, it has a thing that helps you reload. It has, like, foam that puts people out if they're on fire. Um, you know, it has all of these things. It has, like, cables that allow you to pull someone. So, uh, the Lancaster systems are okay. Uh, it also has one of the funniest systems, which is the mule harness, which allows other mechs to ride your mech. Um... So, you know, that's all good, but man, I, like, I am not interested in playing a Lancaster. However, I am very interested in playing a kid. So the kid is, like, uh, the kid's deal is kind of twofold. It has a lot of, it has, like, a bunch of little robots that it uses to build things, like armor packs for your friends, or, like, cover, or, like, a tower for your sniper to be in. Um, and also, it gets its own satellite, which shoots down a beam and wrecks things. So, like, the more the more you do the, the kid's play style, the more powerful your laser beam will be when it comes time for the laser beam to come down from space. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and you might ask, Rodrigo, what if I'm playing underground? What if, like, my character's below tons and tons of Earth? Uh, it's just a game. Shut up. Um, but also, the laser is very thin and can pierce through all that without causing any problems. Don't don't think about it too hard. Um, Harvester says, tiny figures of giant robots really scratches an itch for me. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, so if you've always dreamed of having your own orbital laser, you can play the kid. The Drake. The Drake I'll play if I have to. I don't have anything against it. It's just, you know, big, slow, has a big shield, has some, like, big old guns. If it gets tired of defending his friends, he, he can just go hog with uh, with enormous guns. That's fun. That's a fun play style. Not, not what I'm looking for. Can I play the Caliban? The Caliban is a really fun mech. First off, it's the first ha one half-size mech we've seen. So... Uh, mechs are divi divided into multiple sizes, but the playable mechs only go from size one half to size three. Um, size one half is basically power armor, right? So if I was wearing a Caliban, like you'd still be able to see like my head, although I'd probably be wearing like this like mask thing on there. Um, let's see if we can. Right, so like. This is like a guy in here. Like this, this hand and this hand are like the pilot's hands. Um, it's like I when I was first reading about it, I didn't expect to like be into size one half mechs, but they are very cool because they're power armor and because most half size mechs can, in one way or another, go toe to toe with size one mechs, which are like I don't know, 20 feet tall, and size three mechs or size two mechs, which are like 40 feet tall, and and they just get like bigger and bigger from there, right? Um, okay. Well, let me check something real quick. Okay. Um, the Caliban can take on mechs much larger than it. That's kind of one of the coolest things about it. Is that when it's ramming or grappling, I think. Maybe, maybe ramming and grappling. Actually, I can just check right here. Mm, yeah, 
Wrecking Ball. The Caliban counts as size three when inflicting knockback with any ram, ranged, or melee attack. Yeah, so it's like a, a like a seven foot mech, right? A seven foot power armor that hits as hard as like a 45 foot mech, right? So that's fun. Uh, what else? Tortuga. I'll gladly play the Tortuga. Like the Tortuga is like an excellent defender mech and it actually has lots of stuff going for it. Like one of the things is like it has decent sensors and a positive uh, tech attack bonus. So it's actually a, a completely serviceable hacker mech, right? Even though it's built to basically shotgun things in the face. Tortuga systems are up here, right? It's like, can I play something that has Tortuga shotguns? But the Tortuga is down here. It's a perfectly good mech. I like it a lot. Not necessarily one of my favorites. The rally is, can I please, oh, please play a rally, right? Rally is like the gunslinger mech. It's like, pew, 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 pew. It's high noon or whatever. Um, it comes with a lot of guns. Its playstyle revolves around reloading. So, like, basically it has a gun that fires when you reload. So, you want to put systems that, like, systems that are capped by the fact that they need to be reloaded become a positive thing for the rally, right? So, it's actually very cool in that sense. Um, and, and it doesn't need to be guns, right? It's, like, one of the first kind of discoveries, I think, that you make when you're getting into Lancer is, like, oh, like, all of these, like, gun, like, this gun mech is actually a very good um, projectile mech. Like, you know, like shooting like little rockets at people because some of the rocket stuff needs to be reloaded as well. It's like actually a rocket-based um, rally is, uh, is very good. Uh, the... <laughs> oh, I'm totally blanking on the name. Uh... Nelson. The Nelson. The Nelson is also a can I play a Nelson, please? Like, it's just such a fast mech. Like, you can, like, run over, punch somebody in the face, and use the knockback from that punch to knock yourself back five squares and then run back and hide behind your Tortuga. Like, the mech moves very quickly and just so many squares per turn. Um... Let's see. I might have to pick a Caliban on the name. Home planet of the Dark Angels chapter of Space Marines. Yeah, and definitely if you want a Space Marine mech, the Caliban is it. The Caliban is, I believe, based on Doom guy, right? It's based on, like, that Doom archetype. Um, Horse One Mind says, what percentage of the rally's appeal is its cool hat? It's significant, definitely. Um... Although, your mech can look however you want, so you can give it a bigger hat, or you can give it a different head if you really want. Uh, Little Billy says, Torch, Throughbolt, Mod, and Hyperdense Armor can completely turn the tide in the right scenario. Yeah. So, again, all of these licenses, that's good. I'm glad you brought that up, Little Billy. All of these licenses have three ranks. The rank three stuff tends to be very good, right? So, uh, Little Billy is talking about... Um, it's through bolt rounds, which is a mod that goes on another weapon, and it's hyper dense armor. So if you get a Tortuga all the way to rank three, you are going to be really set, both as an both in, both in offense and defense. And I think that's it for IPSN. Let me get some water. Little Billy says, um, "Oh, yeah." Tinger Billy says, "Do you have, uh, do you have to say rally, like the Aussies do on Pacific Rim? Though you have to say it like the main character does, because he's not American, and he's like, what's your name, Ral Ralorp? Like you have to say it like that." Uh, the l uh, let's see. Skippy says, "Oh my God, this is a stream I always dreamed of." <laughs> okay. Uh, Ma Mazer D says, one of my favorite Lancer jokes is the rally riding a Lancaster into town. Yes. Um, Eleven Dragon Kid, uh, it, like the, the, the person that does the most YouTube Lancer content, has that thing uh, of like when he's introducing the rally, 
he has him like right into town riding a landcaster yeah definitely it's good good stuff yep 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 spend so much time watching 11 dragon kid yep uh, little billy says caliban's built-in shotgun needs to reload after every couple shots but the ejection of spent shells is an attack of its own that's not the built-in one i believe that's the that's the cannibal the cannibal is the one that is like it's just such a big freaking shotgun that when it like reloads you can hit people with the shells because they're coming out so fast um i don't know if the built-in one needs i don't think it needs to be reloaded no but yeah but but the caliban license does come with a shotgun that has that is that is that yeah, the Caliban has three... Well, it has two shotguns and one rocket launcher. Um, and it only has one uh, one mount to put weapons in. So you kind of have to pick. Um, Skippy says, I've been waiting to find out where Black Witch ranks in the Rodrigo tier list. Well, good, because we're about to get to Smith Shimano Corpro. Smith Shimano is my favorite um, mech manufacturer in Lancer. I, I like their style. I like the things they do with the mechs. And mechanically, a lot of the mechs that I like happen to fall in Smith Shimano territory. So let's talk about them. Uh, first off, the um, Morning Cloak. Right, The Morning Cloak is, if you've listened to Critical Hit, is Orem the, uh, Orem the mech. It teleports around, it fights with a sword, and it's always trying to make history checks. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no history checks, but uh, it, it is like a big like teleport and slash person. It wants to isolate enemies and fight them on its own or fight them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, synergizes with a lot of talents, obviously. Uh, this is definitely an I'll gladly play. Uh, I, I will say that some of these mechs have like kind of meme systems, like systems that do goofy stuff. The... <laughs> Uh, the Morning Cloak has a... It's like main teleportation system is is based on rolls. So you roll to, to find out how far you can teleport. If you roll the same number on all... Th you roll three dice. If you roll the, roll the same number on all three dice, the Morning Cloak teleports away and doesn't come back until the fight is over. You basically like accidentally send yourself into like blink space and have to like crawl your way back when the fight is done. It's kind of terrible when it actually happens because then, like, the player doesn't get to play for the rest of the fight. But it's kind of funny to to talk about. Uh, let's see. Um, Malone says, I like the idea of ejected shells being an attack. Definitely going to top tier. Yeah. Um, Skippy says, I love the weird, terrifying existential crap they do. Yeah, SSC is great, MC. Um, Sword Mage Advance, the mech. Yep, that's absolutely right. Uh, can I diplomatize the Lancaster? You can. You can try. You can. You can liturgic code the Lancaster. Black Thumb talent. Yep. We can talk about Black Thumb. Um, well, you survive the fight. Hopefully, you do survive the fight. I mean, you're guaranteed to survive that fight. Um, yeah, the Black Thumb talent uh, that Semzi brings up is a talent that allows you to be outside of your mech. You need an NHP friend to run your mech. And then you jump out of your mech and you're like kind of riding it around and like putting out your friends with like your little uh, fire extinguisher for coyotes on the freeway. And um, and yeah, it like basically gives you an extra set of actions. And for support mechs, Black Thumb is really good. Um, let's see. On top of that, Morning Cloak with attached goblin ally would presumably take them into next week too. Yes. If the goblin was, was doing his attachment to, to that, <laughs> I think they would both go away. Okay. Um, the uh, Monarch. Right? Now I'm like freaking out. Like I'm like, I, I know these, I know these mechs, right? Yes. The Monarch. Uh, the Monarch could be up here. I like it a lot. I really do. I love this mech. But it's very centered on artillery and specifically on rockets. And so you can make a, a you can make a monarch that isn't that, but you're kind of throwing away a lot of its like strengths. You're like, okay, I'm gonna take like I'm going to purposefully make a a, a mech that's like not as good as it could be so that I can do this with a monarch. Um 
Honestly, unless you're like, you know, it's like a monarch with a sniper rifle is very good. A monarch with like a n giant nexus is very good. But the monarch wants to shoot rockets, right? So that's good. That's respectable. Again, I will gladly play a monarch, but I would rather play something else. Um, Swallowtail is ultra top tier. It's probably actually my favorite mech. The Swallowtail is the opposite of what I was saying about the Monarch. It's extremely flexible. Like, you can play a an artillery Swallowtail. You can play a sneaky Swallowtail. You can play a Swallowtail that uh, never attacks and just spends time um, finding out, basically putting, uh, finding out information about the enemy and making it easier for your friends to hit them, right? Um, and then, you know, get in for some plank damage if you if you have to. But um, I really like the Swallowtail um, because it covers a lot of different play styles. Sorry, just need to do this. Sorry about that. Uh, gotta love a point-and-click adventure as a character. Yep. Uh, the Coyoting the free Freeway is a great mech name. Yep. That is a good name for a mech. Um, if I had to pick a mech for Rodrigo, it would be the invisible cannon on legs. Yep. I also love because it's like the, the art of it is the closest thing to a touch coma from Ghost in the Shell. So I love that. Um, which leads us to our first alternate frame, I think. The Ranger Swallowtail. So there are alternate frames. You can use those frames with the same license. Uh, the Ranger Swallowtail is actually not up here. It's down here. I like it a lot, but why would I play this when I can play a regular Swallowtail, right? I mean, it's fun. There's, like, one of the fun things that the Ranger Swallowtail can do is, like, it can add um, some amount of terrain, like, at the beginning of the fight, because it already scouted it, is like, oh, here's a thing that gives me soft cover over here and over here, or whatever. So it's like, you can actually, it's like, codified way for the players to affect, like, the, the game board. You know, not just with their, like, movement or whatever, but you can actually, like, drop things on the game board with the uh, Ranger Swallowtail. Um, I do... I, I, I love the touch comas. Uh, okay. I know a lot of people were waiting for the Black Witch. The Black Witch is... Uh, I'll play a Black Witch. It's fine. Like, the Black Witch is an excellent mech, and it's, like, out of, like, a lot of the mechs in the game, it probably has, like, the strongest, like, focus, because its whole thing is magnetism. So it can, like, it takes less damage from bullets. Um, it has all of these systems that move people around. It uses ferrofluid to, to like, lash enemies and allies and stuff. Um, so it's got a lot going for it. But, you know, it's okay. I don't, like, I, I like it just fine. Um, the Orchis, or the Orcus, which is its alternate frame, is down here. Like, it has this thing where it has a shield that you can throw around. Like, very clearly, people were like, I want to play Captain America. And they're like, okay, we'll give you an alternate frame that leaves, lets you play Captain America. But I don't know. I'm not really all that interested in the Orcus. I don't know why. Um... Skippy says she uses the Force Space Mech Wizard. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, if you see the Black Witch, like, doing this at you, you should be worried. Because you're probably about to be thrown 10 feet back into a chasm. Um, Dr. Cheesington says, I'm planning to grab Ferris Lash for a Baylor build in a game soon, and I'm really looking forward to it. Ferris Lash is excellent on a Baylor, right? Because, like, with a Baylor, you want your friends... And by friends, I mean enemies. Very close to you. So it's like you just kind of go around grabbing enemies. and like, let me m murder you at, at point blank range. One second. Sorry, guys.
Alright, sorry about that. Sometimes you just have to send a text right away. Okay. Um, Little Billy says, our X and Kidu player came back in a Black Witch. Uh, we had to stop halfway in a defensive fight, but we might just survive in the in the Magfield deployment. Works out right? Yeah. Magfield's very strong. Um, Black Witch gets coolness points by name alone. Yeah. the So... Probably, if you're new to the game, you probably haven't caught it yet, but all of the SSC mechs are based, are, are named after butterflies and moths, right? Morning Cloak, Monarch, Swallowtail, Black Witch, those are all, um, I, think the, I think all of those are, well, no, obviously Monarch Butterflies, but yeah, Butterflies or Moths. Uh, let's see, the Atlas. The Atlas... The Atlas is almost I'm busy that night, but it's more like if I have to. Um, because if I'm going to play a fighty size one half mech, I'm going with the Caliban. Like if I have the option, I'm going Caliban. The Atlas is cool. Its systems are very cool. Um, it has a terrible reactor. Um, and it's very frail. So... You kind of have to play it as a ninja unless your support, unless like the rest of your team is like support heavy um, and also can catch up with you because it's also a very, uh, a very mobile mech. So like if your support is like a Saladin who has to like, like um, immobilize themselves to use a lot of their support uh, systems, I, I don't know how helpful that's going to be. Uh, let's see. So an, a new mech that just came out with the with the KTB book, with the Kerakin Trade Barony's book, is the Emperor. The Emperor is another one I'll gladly play. I'm actually really getting into it. Like I've been reading over it a few times, thinking of builds. Like a really mobile. Like the the Emperor's thing is that it comes that bow that it has. That's an integrated weapon. It comes with that. Um, and when you shoot it, it's kind of like Anna from Overwatch, or Anna. Is it Anna or Anna? I don't know. Um, so when you shoot your weapon and you hit your friends, they get temporary hit points. When you shoot your weapon and you hit their, your enemies, they take damage. And it's the same weapon. So that's kind of fun. If you're into that play style, basically it, like, it shoots it in a line. So I'm like, the fun thing here would be to have a very mobile uh, emperor who can, like, who can always get like, two, at least two things in one shot. Right? That's, that's the, that would be the ideal for me. Um, Lil Billy says I'm final. I'm seriously considering my final build being Goblin, Atlas, and a little bit of Baylor. Sure. Um, do all make games have an Atlas? Is it mandatory? Well, I think they couldn't pass it up once they started naming it after moths to realize that there's an Atlas moth. Uh, so yeah, I think they all games end up with an Atlas. Death's Head. Want it to be here. It's probably. Yeah, you know what? I'll gladly play a Death's Head. I, I actually will gladly play it. It's it's the it's the main sort of like sniper platform, but you can do other stuff with it. I was toying around with a um, with a Tachyon Lance um, build for it, and you can do it. Like, yeah, a Tachyon Lance is a super heavy weapon that just like shoots a like shoots a, a single tachyon at like super speed and thus causes whatever it hits to like blow up real bad um so uh yeah you can do it the duskwing named after the dusky wing moth um the duskwing might actually be up here and i like it as a hacking platform so if I'm going to play a hacker and I can't play a Swallowtail hacker, I might play a Duskwing hacker. Um, the Duskwing is also the only mech that comes with built-in flying system. So you can fly from license level 2. I, I mean, you can fly from license level 1 if you take a system that does it, but it's going to charge you heat. The, the, um, the Duskwing's... Um, flight system is is heatless it doesn't it doesn't generate any any extra heat so another new relatively new mech i mean these mechs have been around but they just got printed um is the white witch the white witch is the white witch is definitely and i'll gladly play um 
it takes like like the black witch does a little bit of ferrofluid stuff the the white witch is like hold my beer like the white witch is like everything is ferrofluid also i'm going to activate my my system so that like literally i'm like at an atomic level like eating stuff from the environment to turn it into ferrofluid it's it's hardcore the lore around it is really hardcore um really really enjoyable um Uh, I'm seriously considering my final... Oh, you said that? Uh-huh. I think so. It's a lot to have an Atlas. Yep. Uh, Lil Billy says, yay, more half-size. Yeah. Uh, Sinjadilu says, why would you not be able to use certain mechs? Um, uh, because, so... Okay, so the, the way the game goes is, at first, you only have access to the, the Everest and the Sagarmatha. Then, every level, you get a new rank in whichever mech you choose so you can take your first level can be a black witch your next level can be a death's head right if that's what you wanted um once you get to level two you have access to the frames right so you can get into the actual black witch mech so why would you not be able to play a certain mech and nothing is held away from you but some mechs don't work together so you might not be able to play that um some mechs uh and yeah and there's only 12 levels so you know you can you can <laughs> you can play probably up you can have up to with 12 levels that's probably six mechs you can probably have eight mechs available to you at level 12 like eight different frames that you can get into at level 12 but most people aren't going to do that so by picking one mech and not picking another it, uh, it's, um, yeah, you're, you're, you're losing that opportunity cost. You're losing that ability to do anything else by specializing in one thing. So I, I think that's what you mean. Um, the little Billy says the core book mechs usually are considered universal, though I've not played enough publicly to see if there's trends of house rule bans. Yeah. So. Yeah, so some mechs are rarer than others, but if it's printed, like, reasonably the player should be able to pick that mech. Like, supplement, like mechs from supplements, like the Zang or the White Witch or whatever. Like, if a Game Master says only core book mechs, that's, that's reasonable. Um, but all core book mechs should reasonably be available. And if you need to tweak your character's story to make that happen... That's okay, and and you should, because um, you know obviously your character's story is is important as well. Okay. The metal mark is a definitely a can I play? So the metal mark, so every every um every company right has a mech that's kind of the all-arounder um and this for me the metal mark is the best all-arounder it does stealth it does frontline fighting um it does most of what you want like if somebody is like rodrigo i really need you to play a sniper i might go with a metal mark over the the death's head even though the death's head is kind of explicitly the sniper platform right the metal mark is just good it's like its stats are good uh it can turn invisible and uh again if you're into that ghost in the shell thing right it's like the metal marks the one that's going to be uh, and 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 the swallowtail um they're the ones that are going to be turning invisible on their own dread woe seven thank you for the follow i appreciate it we are ranking um mechs from the lancer rpg based on uh based on whether i like them or not is, is basically the main thing so this first category would be if somebody invites me, I would say, can I play a Swallowtail? Can I play a Kid? Can I play a Caliban? Um, the second thing is like, no, we already have one of those. And then I'll be like, oh, well, I'll gladly play a Vlad or I'll gladly play a Monarch, right? The last, the this is if I have to, like, they'll be like, well, we really need you to play. Like, nobody's playing any SSC stuff or one half mechs. Please, please play an Atlas. And I'll be like, okay, if I have to. 
And then this last category is like, I don't want to play that mech. I'm busy that night. Um, are there tank support DPS equivalent? Okay, Lil Billy says artillery support, defender, striker, controller are the terms I hear the most. Yep. And most mechs, like the majority of these mechs, exist in a Venn diagram of at least two of these things. Okay. Guys, we've gotten into Horus. Horus is that um, hacker collective. Um, they are well known for helping, for aiding revolutions. Um, and also just for screwing with like the other companies. And with Union sometimes. And they hate Horizon, which is I'm not going to get into here. Uh, so, first up... You know, again, these are in, once we get to the companies, these are in no particular order. First up, the li the Lich. The Lich is an I'll gladly play. It should probably be here, but, like, it's literally hard to play a Lich. Like, the Lich's deal is that it can rewind its own timeline. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> like, if you are playing a Lich, you probably want... Like, you want your entire mech to be destroyed at least once per mission because you've been, like, running it so hard. And then you just rewind time and then you're not destroyed, right? Yeah, that's how the Lich works. So I'm like, okay, okay, that sounds fun, that sounds cool, that sounds rad. It's too much thinking for me. Like, I... Like, there are things that can shut down your ability to rewind time. So it's like, if any of that happens, then I'll be like, oh. Well, I guess my character just dies. <laughs> like, the, like I killed my own character doing this thing because I thought I was going to be able to rewind time and I can't. So there you go. Uh, so yeah, definitely a, a mech that I'll gladly play, but not one I would jump to play. Uh, Dreadwolf says, yes, all hail the Heresy Company. Yes. Um... Skippy says, everything's fun in the club until Logicoma shows up and starts shooting so much you have to backflip away. Yep. Um, Skippy says, uh, God, I love Horus. It's like cosmic horror go got into electrical engineering. Yep. Um, Skippy says, that's just a JoJo's villain. I mean, sure. Yeah. Uh, Dreadwo says, or taking a hit from an ally then deciding that you aren't going to get hit anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, Hey, uh, I'm like, hey, Lich, I just set up the, um, I forget which missiles, like the, the Monarch has these like missile, like these huge missiles that if you have them hit next turn, like basically you designate an area, if you have them hit next turn, they hit even harder. They do like 4d6 damage or whatever. So it's like, yeah, as a Lich, you can just be like, boop, 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 and hang out there, like grapple an enemy so that it can't move away, get blown up. And then the enemy gets blown up and you just, like, rewind your time so that you didn't get hit, right? You can do all kinds of stuff like that. Um, sounds super weird and super cool, exactly like a JoJo villain. Yep, yep. Horse One Mind says, sounds like a mech for Rob. I think Rob would enjoy the Lich. I think he would. Um, I guess afterwards I can go through and tell you who, like, the who, who I think, which mechs I think the Critical Hit crew would like. So we can do that too. All right. Speaking of things Rob would probably like... The Hydra. The Hydra is a definite if I have to for the same reason. Um, it's just complicated. Like, the point of the hy Hydra is to fill the the battlefield with drones. And then use your abilities and talents to sort of move them around into position. So that they cause, like, maximum amount of, like, grief for the opponent, right? I don't want to play that. <laughs> like... You can play that. If I'm running, you can absolutely play a Hydra, you know, and you can deal with the headache of figuring out where you want your drones to go. Um, but not me, thanks. I would rather not play a Hydra. But if I have to, I guess I would. Uh, the Hydra also has, like, some of the stronger Nexus weapons. Um, and what Nexus weapons are, are weapons that generate, uh, like, either small drones or nanobots. And then basically, like, the, like they create, like, a nanobot cloud that then, like, burns up other mechs or, like, chews them away or whatever. Um, and, yep, everything has an access to Nexus weapons, but the, the Nexus weapons that come with the um, Hydro License are very good. 
Uh, Skippy says, he's Hydra Hardcore. Yeah, Rob definitely is. You play a drone cloud and it's terrifying, like that Michael Reeves video. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you know, um, flavor-wise, it's hard to tell in this picture, but fa flavor-wise, that's that's the deal, is that the, the Hydra is actually just made of drones. And, like, different parts of it just, like, separate and fly off. Uh, give me one second. Let me get some water. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Okay, so remember the, the remember the dust cloaks thing, or, or sorry, the morning cloaks thing, where it's like sometimes I disappear for the entire fight. So the other big meme system is um, I'm blanking out on his name. Uh, the Manticore. Because all of these, all of Horus's um, mechs have like D and D monster names. Sometimes I get them confused. So the Manticore uh, is uh, the Manticore is, and I'll gladly play. So the Manticore meme ability is that it can blow itself up extra good, right? Instead of like the 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 normal like if you blow up your own reactor, you do a certain amount of damage over a certain area. The Manticore does, like, way more, and it kills you. Like, there are ways to, to make your uh, reactor go super critical and then eject out of your mech and run away. The Manticore doesn't do that. If you blow up the Manticore on purpose, you have to die in it. It's like the opposite of the Lich. Um, that said, most people don't do that because you want to just keep playing your character. So I'm here to tell you, right here, right now, if you play, um, I think they call it like a safe core, like or safety core. If you play the Manticore, but you play it as a safety core, that is, you never push it into the like state that allows it to like super blow up. That's fine. You are valid. The Manticore is an excellent platform, just by itself. Uh, the Goblin. Goblin is another if I have to. Um, I like the Goblin. Uh, the Goblin is another size one half mech, so it itself is also like kind of like power armor instead of like a full on mech. Um, but I like Goblin's systems. Like Goblin systems are definitely either up here or down here. But when you look at the whole license, I don't like the frame itself very much. Just personal thing. Um, Somebody brought up earlier that the Goblin has the ability to latch on to other friendly mechs and then you can share its systems and it can share your systems. So that's kind of fun and weird. I, I do like that. That's something fun that the Goblin can do. Um, Horsepoint Mind says, I don't know if there's any other friends at the table fans here, but the Hydra seems like Territory Jazz's mech from Counterweight. Okay. I'm not, I'm not familiar, but that's cool. Uh, Skippy says, we're coming up on probably my all-time favorite. Pegasus is the one I understand the least and want to play the most. Yes. Uh, Malone says, they took their naming gimmick from Warhammer Imperial Guard tanks. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, Skippy says, Gobo, what a good tiny little dude. Yeah, I don't have anything against it. I just kind of don't. I don't want to play a goblin. Again, if they're like, Rodrigo, we really need a hacker. I'm like... Can I play a hacker tail, meaning a, a, a swallow tail, basically a swallow tail with goblin systems? And if they tell me no, then I'm busy that night. Um, Harvestry says, I was really prepared for Rodrigo to say, if you play safety core, I'm here to tell you, you're a coward. <laughs> Some people will tell you that, but no. If you don't want your manticore to blow up, um, then that's fine. That said, here's here's my here's my pitch for a, a Manticore writing character, right? You tell everybody that you're actually from the future and that the only way that you can go back home is to get your mech to like exceed 1.21, probably like tera, terawatts. I don't know, a, a huge amount of energy, right? So um, you're basically playing Marty McFly, right? In this mech. And then, one day, you finally get it. Your mech blows up, right? And people are like, did he make it? 
Did he actually go back to the future or did he just die? And then later on, you can decide if you play a brand new character or if you come back as the same character on a lich, right? It's like, hey, guys, I was able to go back to the future and I brought the time traveling um, mech back with me. It's horrifying in here. I hate it. So that you guys, you can you can play that concept if you want at your next table. Your game master will probably not allow it. Um, Giga Terra's great Scott died to change, change to live. That's exactly right. Okay, we are coming up on the Pegasus. The Pegasus is definitely up here. Can I play a Pegasus? Can I place? Can I please play a Pegasus? Let me wax poetic about the Pegasus. So the Pegasus is an artillery frame. Let's pull it up because there's a lot to talk about with the Pegasus. So the Pegasus abilities are really cool and weird. Uh, for example, it has this ability called Blurp Extrude Gun. The rule text is gun colon gun right uh, there's also by the way i know everything which allows it to do the average or like maybe slightly above the average value for whatever dice you're rolling which is very good um and then it also has this uh hor like it actually has multiple multiple horrifying shapeless weapons um that can like change up or become something else right it has this like thing like it, it really again if you look at the influences it has a real like uh was it like mass produced eva uh vibe to it um but yeah i i basically i love taking the pegasus guns and systems and putting them on other mechs and i love taking the the weapons from other mechs and putting it on the pegasus and they're like they are both really good so when you look at it like what is a license that has that is both very complete but also has a lot of flexibility and opportunity to do other things the pegasus is definitely there i'm a big fan of the pegasus probably my favorite like i guess literally my favorite horus mech because we're almost done and none of them have cracked it up here um but the baylor does i actually would i, I uh, baylor is definitely a can i play for me um the baylor is a mech that's made of primarily of nanites um And so uh, it can basically it's just constantly like tearing apart anything that's near it. Um, and also it can heal itself real easily because it can just kind of repurpose its nanites to become part of its structure again. Um, yeah, it's like it's, all, it's like a very scary mech. Also, the license itself is very good. It has a lot of like really good things. Um, Uh, Sinjo Dilly says that looks this. Oh, talking about the Pegasus, that looks disturbing. We got some out of control Eva vibrations here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you're here to bring the final impact. Harvest says, oh, hey, it's Volo the Me Voldo the Mech. Yeah, it, it does kind of have that energy. Uh, Sinjo Dilly says, yep, that looks like heresy. It is. Don't look at it. Don't look at it, any of its weapons directly. Uh, Skippy says, that's the Eva that gets taken over by an angel at the end of the original series. Just complete body horror and gun. Gun. Yep. Uh, Lil Billy says the Grey Goo powered large size hacker. Yep, that's right. And it's a it's a decent like the Baylor is a point blank hacker. Like the Baylor is best at hacking when you're like literally sitting on top of whatever you're hacking. So, so that's a play style that you can do. Um, the Cobalt Cobalt systems up here. Cobalt frame down here. Another size one half mech. Very good. Um, very flavorful systems and very powerful systems. Uh, the Cobalt is like really solid. Um, the Cobalt also occupies a special place in the lore because um, there is a... Right, so there's like the Karakin Trade Baronies, which is like if you want to play Dune in Lancer, you go play at the KTB, right? They have lords and they have royal houses and stuff or noble houses and stuff so they have all that going on so anyway they also have going on basically slavery or you know similar 
um, su hyper low paying like wage slavery type stuff. Um, so the kobold is one of the mechs that like miners in one particular place use to like stage a successful revolution or a successful revolution up until they got squished again. Um, but yeah, the kobold is like kind of like an important mech because it was like vital uh, for the um, for the ungratefuls in I forget what planet it was. Uh, Mecha War forty thousand. Yep. Uh, okay. What else? Ooh. Ooh, the Gorgon. The Gorgon is. The Gorgon I should put down here, but it's actually up here. Like the Gorgon is like a, a really, really solid defender mech. Basically, it tries a. If somebody attacks its friends, they get hit, in some way. And also, it has a system that when you attack it, it can stun the opponent. So, it it's a it's a basically a mech that is like, if you hit my friends, I'm gonna hit you, and if you hit me, you're gonna get stunned. So, it's a really oppressive um, defender mech. It's probably stats-wise one of the best mechs in the game. Uh, Gorgon is the communist mech. It's not your turn. It's our turn. Yep, that's right. That's right. It it actually, it's one of the it's one of two mechs I want to say that gets multiple reactions. Everything just gets one reaction, but the Gorgon gets two. So yeah, it, you can basically eat somebody like an enemy's turn by by triggering its systems. Uh, Gorgon is so pretty too in a truly unsettling and disturbing way. Yeah, it's it's true. The the all mechs have a core system, right? So we've talked about some of the core systems. Uh, the the Gorgon's core system is like Extrude Basilisk. And it basically creates this like hologram that is like harmful to machines. And actually not, not particularly good for humans either. And uh, it makes it... Um, yeah, basically, once again, it allows you to stun enemies. Um, by, like, extruding this, like, weird code that, like, messes with other people's mechs and NHPs. It's good times. Okay, uh, the Minotaur. Uh, definitely, a Minotaur is definitely... Maybe not definitely, because I'm having trouble. Is it I'm busy that night? Yeah, I don't super want to play a Minotaur. But... The the miniature alt, alt frame is probably either here or here, so we'll put it here for safety. Um, this is, you know, obviously they made this tier list before uh, the Orcus or the uh, Calendula came out, so that's back when it was like codenamed Wrath or Wraith. Um, the the Minotaur is very much a, a like a controller. You can like blink enemies away or back or wherever you want um, it has a big thing about slowing enemies like it's a solid controller frame I'm just not very interested in playing it uh, Minotaur reminds me of just a bog standard Titanfall mech yeah especially because it doesn't have a head like a lot of what's cool about the Minotaur is lore based like the Minotaur's one of the Minotaur systems is that basically its cockpit is a pocket dimension and you can't be hurt while you're in the in the Minotaur's cockpit. So you can blow up the Minotaur and you would just appear somewhere else on Scathe, right? So again, not something that comes up very often, but I guess when it comes up, it's good. Um, but yeah, yeah, the Minotaur's okay. All right, we have made it down to the final company. Let me get some water. Lock in your guesses for what Harrison Armory Max Rodrigo actually likes. All right, you guys ready? Uh, Zemzi says, "Hee hee, Basilisk hack reminds me of Eclipse Face." Sure. 
Uh, Lil Billy says, Gorgon's Vorpal Gun is possibly the me best named item in the game. Yeah, sure. Uh, again, there's this, like... There was this thing going around that's like, are Horus members mythology buffs or just D&D &D dweebs? And, you know, things like the Vorpal Gun is like, okay, well, the Gor Vorpal is like Lewis Carroll stuff, but the way that they use it is kind of D&D-ish. And then they, like, came out with the Lich. And it's like, yeah, the Lich is, like, straight up just a D&D &D monster. Like, the the Horus guys are just D&D &D geeks. Um, Skippy says, here's the company I know the least about. I think Tube Face might be the only one Rodrigo likes for aesthetics alone. Okay, that's the Sun Z. Yeah. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about Harrison Armory. So, uh, in the so you have Union, right? It's like that sort of like um, the Federation type, like we're good and we're trying to do right by people, kind of government uh, for uh, a bunch of planets, including Earth, right? Um, also, there's no okay. There are sentient aliens in this setting. But they won't. They probably won't come up in your game. Um, and the only other sentient aliens are NHPs, basically. Um, so, uh, before, or really, originally, Union is like, let's help people. And then it turned into fascism. And did a fascism over the entire place. And then they were overthrown for a let's help people uh, government again. So that second government had a lot of like advanced a lot of technology and a lot of that technology went with people who escaped uh from like their trials or whatever and and basically formed harrison armory so harrison armory is kind of full of fascists or as the setting calls them anthro chauvinists um which is not great but their mechs are very good and they're very they are very capitalist so like they won't stop you from using their mechs. You could literally use a Harrison Armory mech to fight a Harrison Armory squad, and that's just kind of par for the course uh, for them. Uh, let's see. Oh, a held message. Mm. One, two, one toe, and through and through his Vorpal Blade went Snicker Snack. Yeah, it, it didn't like Snicker. But it's okay. Um, Skippy says we're personified democratic capitalism. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Like, Harrison Armory, you know, Harrison Armory has its own citizens. Like, it's such a, like, Harrison Armory, SSC, and IPSN are super corps, right? They're so big that they basically have, like, employee citizens. Um, they each operate differently, but Harrison Armory is, like, in the business of, like, terraforming planets. Um, reconquering planets that have, you know, strayed away from Union or from it. Uh, they're out there doing stuff, and a lot of it is not great, but their mechs are really good. Okay, here we go. Um, Skippy says, wild that someone would willingly call themselves chauvinist as a term of pride. They don't. They don't call themselves anthro chauvinists. Um, the setting calls them anthro chauvinists. Um, but no, they don't. They don't refer to themselves as anthro Um Skippy says uh, Harrison Armory is just Exxon Mobil. Mobil. Fun fact: Exxon Mobil has a foreign policy. Yeah, yeah, that's that's about right. Like for people that want to play that cyberpunk, let's bring capitalism down type of game, you're fighting against Harrison Armory almost certainly. Okay. First up, the Sherman, like the standard Harrison Armory troop this is supposed to be the second most common mech in the world in the universe after the everest that's definitely and i'll gladly play the sherman systems are up here but the sherman mech brings it down a peg because it's kind of doing like a very similar thing to the rally in that it wants to stabilize and stabilizes the action that you take to reload um so it definitely, you know, it's different. It's doing different things. And again, its systems are very good. But it's just kind of like, yeah, I would gladly play a Sherman. Somebody comes to me. Hey, Rodrigo, we need a, we need somebody to play a, to, to run a Sherman. I would gladly do it. Saladin is another if I have to. I just, 
it's like I I think that like the Saladin's big deal is that it like creates these like bubble shields that then help you protect your allies. But I think that the Emperor just does shielding better because it uses overshield, which is basically temporary hit points. And it's like, yeah, I feel like the Emperor just does that, but better. It's flavored differently. It works very differently. If you like the Saladin, go for it. The Saladin also has like its final level ha is like a reward level because it has probably the strongest mod in the game in the Paracausal mod. Um, so yeah, if you if you're playing a Saladin and you get all the way to to license level three, you're gonna have a really good weapon that you'll use sometimes because the Saladin wants to sometimes do other things with its turn. Um, but but lots of people just take Saladin levels to get that um, to get that mod. Like it's like the mod is good enough that you can base that they'll basically waste two levels to get the to get it. You know, it's and if you want to do that, that's fine. Uh, Harrison is Harrison Armor is fam na uh, naming convention famous generals. Yes, so uh, Smith Shimano moths. Um, uh, IPSN is Age of Sail stuff or sailing stuff. So it's like that's why it's like the kid and the Nelson. Um, but then it breaks away with it, with like the, like, they're not very consistent. Like, obviously the Caliban is not a thing that's from like Shakespeare. Um, so, and, and Tortuga is also not a guy that sails. So it's like vaguely sailing aspected, but mostly not. Uh, Horus is like mythical creatures. And, and we'll, I'll point out that part of the lore with Horus is that it, they don't name their own things. Like, they're not like, oh, here's the Pegasus. These are actually, in-universe, named by the Union people that investigate them. They're like, oh, we saw this new mech appear. We think it has Horus types or Horus ties. They investigate it, and they're like, yeah, this is a new pattern group. We'll call this one the Minotaur, right? That's why, that's why they have the names they have. I think, based on the lore, that's how Horus works. Uh, the naming convention for... Uh, yep, that's all the companies. And then, yeah, Harrison Armory is famous generals. Uh, Malone says, we're all generals and warlords, yes. Uh, Harvest City says, feels like a shame they didn't go with Harrison Forge. Yeah. Uh, Skippy says, yeah, a company that makes gun, gun doesn't really seem, seem big on names, no. Um, and again, they're very decentralized, so they probably couldn't agree on a name anyway. So, you have, there you go. Uh, Horse One Mind says, well, Caliban is from the Tempest, which is on an island. It's a stretch, but I guess it works. Sure, right? Same thing with the Tortuga. The Tortuga is an island, which is on the sea, so that works, I guess. Vlad, of course, based on Vlad Tepes, who was in Romania, which presumably has some sort of water somewhere. I don't know if Romania borders on an ocean. But yeah, the Vlad really doesn't work. Uh, okay, the Napoleon is... The Napoleon is actually I'm busy that night. I know it seems weird. Why wouldn't I, I want to play a tiny mech that can basically uh, create a a a, per a perfect defense around itself where nothing can hurt it and it can only hurt things by like slamming into them? Why would I do that? Why would I not want to do that, right? I don't know. There's just something about the Napoleon. I read its systems. I reread its systems. And I'm like... This is cool. I get why people want to do it, but I'm not interested. Uh, the Napoleon is also famous for having a gun that gives you like 10 heat when you use it, so it'll like it'll blow up most mechs. Yeah, the displacer. Like basically, it shoots at you. It does 10 energy damage, so it will kill most things, and then it gives you 10 heat, so it'll probably melt down your reactor. Or make your reactor take some amount of stress. Um, so that's fun. You know, maybe maybe that would be a system that I would be interested to run on something else. But I don't know. I just don't feel the Napoleon. Oh, that's right. That's right. You're right. Dracula does cross over uh, in, a, in a ship. Uh, Horse Point Mind points that out. Um, one of the scariest scenes I've ever read. Yep, you're right. Famously, Dracula does cross over 
in like the the Demeter or whatever the Demeter. Um, so yeah, no, you're right. Good job. Way to way to way to fanboy that into shape. I I, I appreciate that. Displacer Lich, yep, Displacer Lich, perfectly perfectly reasonable. I think I think the Displacer is a main. Uh, yep, it's a main rifle, so yep, the the Lich can run it. Uh, let's see. Skippy says Tortuga was a pirate port. Sure, yeah, yeah. Right, but it's not like Harrison Armory where they're all named after guys. Like, IPSN is like very loosely sale stuff. Uh, okay, let's look at the Sunzi. Uh, the Sunzi is here. Like, I don't want to play this mech. Its systems are up here. Like, if you actually play a game of Lancer that goes 12 levels and nobody takes any levels of Sunzi or Sunzi, um, that that is a shame because its systems are really good for providing, like, movement and maneuverability on the battlefield. The mech itself, though... I'm not super interested in playing. That's an if I have to. Um, not quite. I'm busy that night, but that's if I have to. Yeah, that taxi man. Yep. Uh, Skippy says, all named after people who became famous for immense civilian casualties. Yeah, that's the that's that's the deal with Harrison Armory, right? It's like it definitely glorifies that like war um, that war legacy that humans have. Lil Billy says, if the fighting will result in victory, the Sun Z stays to fight. Yep. Uh, okay. Next, the Iskander, right? Named after Alexander the Great, right? Iskander was his, like, Greek name or something. Um, that is... I'll gladly play an Iskander. The Iskander is a, is a weird mech. It's, like, very different from all the other mechs. Its deal is that it lays down mines... Like, it's like, bloop, 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 laying down mines. And then it has a gravity gun to pull people into the mines. Like, hey, 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 So that's fun. Yeah, that's cool. Um, you know, if you have, if you're playing an Iskander and you have um, players, and you have teammates who are big on moving people. So, for example, a, a Sunzi. Or, or, or on moving enemies, a Sunzi or uh, a goblin, or um, yeah, like one of those two, like a Sunzi, a goblin, or a Caliban, which actually has a lot of knockback. Like you, you can like lay down a bunch of mines, and then your friends can like knock enemies into them. That's fun. Um, Malone says, famous seafarers, Kid, Marco Polo, Columbus, Dracula. Yep. Um, Skippy says, it's a trap. It's a trap character in a fighting game. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, definitely. Yep. Definitely a trap character in a fighting game. And it feels like a trap character in a fighting game because trap characters very often don't feel like they actually belong in that game. And I like I all the time. I don't know. I can't explain it. But I feel like the Iskander just kind of is like a. a it's a mech from like a different game that just got paracausal like blinked into Lancer. That's a kebab name. The Iskander is a kebab. Tokugawa. So the Tokugawa is the there's a there's a a, a, a set of talents called Nuclear Cavalier, and the Tokugawa is kind of the Nuclear Cavalier mech per excellence. Um, because it's the mech that runs, runs the hottest, and because its own systems want it to run so hot that it exposes its reactor. Um, the Tokugawa is frankly, and I'm busy that night, like, I look at it and I'm like, I don't like it. Like, the Tokugawa is actually secretly a, um, like, it, it portrays itself as a melee uh, mech, but it's actually secretly an artillery mech. Um, but man, I don't, I don't like it. Just kind of don't like the way it goes. I think it. It's not just that it's like a risky way to play. I like the nuclear cavalier options. I just don't like them together with the 
um, with the Tokugawa, and you kind of have to run Nuclear Cavalier if you're running a Tokugawa anyway. Uh, now, the alternate frame from the Tokugawa, uh, the... I always get this one. Oh, the Enkidu. The Enkidu is definitely a... Can I please, oh please, play an Enkidu? Which is amazing, right? That's probably the biggest difference, right? It's like the... Between frames. The... Um, the Minotaur is like one step. The Orchis is one step. The Swallowtail is one step. This is all the steps, right? I don't want to play a Tokugawa, but I would love to play an Enkidu. And the Enkidu's deal is that it's basically a monster. You're only ever half in control of it. And if it hits the danger zone, which is if your heat gets to half your heat camp, it basically, like, it's like claws, like, extend into, like, whips. And it's like, blah, 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 and, like, just shred shreds everything around it. Uh, also, its core power is that it can, if something has, is it seven hit points or less? If something has seven hit points or less, you can, like, just pick it up and, like, split it in half and just kill it. And if you successfully kill it, you get to move and you get, you regain the you regain access to to it. So basically, if there are multiple enemies at like low hit points, you can run around and just like tear them apart, just completely destroy them, um, and then use that momentum to do it again and again. It can get pretty nuts, but it's also kind of hard to to line it all up. Um, if the action fails to destroy the target, they just take one damage as you kind of like try to like wedge your claws into them and it doesn't work. Uh, it's like the Enkidu is a super flavorful uh, platform. But yeah, I just, I from the beginning, I've never really liked Tokugawa, but I like the Enkidu. Uh, okay, let's do, let's do the new Genghis first. So new Genghis is definitely, I will gladly play a Genghis. The Genghis is a... Um, flamethrower based mech so if you want flamethrowers you go with the Genghis if you want to play f put flamethrowers on anything you take Genghis levels and get the flamethrowers although the flamethrowers are the only flamethrowers are heavy and super heavy so a lot of mechs can not run the flamethrowers um, talking about the uh, the Enkidu the crazy Tasmania devil SOB yep that's right um, Malone says it's like real Sengoku Samurai. Everyone thinks of swords when they had more muskets and con than continental Europe at the time. Yeah, like a real samurai. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. That's the Tokugawa. Highway to the Danger Zone, of course. The, the Danger Zone is uh, something that is a, an actual stat in this game. So if we ever run it on critical hit, will we ever stop Matthew and possibly Rob from singing this? No, definitely not. Um... Skippy says, I think it's funny they went with Enkidu instead of Gilgamesh for this one. Yeah, it's because, you know, Enkidu is like the dark one, right? Is like Gilgamesh, even though Gilgamesh is himself like a badass. Um, uh, you know, Enkidu is like the dark mirror of Gilgamesh, right? So they went with that. Um, Zemsi says, that's basically a mech finisher from Titanfall. And that's probably why they included it, right? They were like, hey, can I play a mech that just can rip people apart? And they're like, sure. Um, Skippy says, I do war crimes to get Lancer version of Titanfall. Yeah. Uh, Harvester says, oh, Lancer has food safety rules? What? Are we talking about the danger zone? Like, yes, don't. Like, things have to be at least cooked well enough by the Genghis before you can eat them. Horseman Mine says, "Have you? Hey, you eventually managed to get me get the Thunderstruck Rivs to stop whenever Orem Thunder Wave. That's true. And it took years, almost a decade. Yep, the Danger Zone. Um, I guess also, yeah, like Lancer, not Lancer, Archer also has like Danger Zone jokes. Don't leave things out for more than four hours, or you're in the Danger Zone. Okay, gotcha, gotcha." I see what you're saying. All right. So we're down to just a couple more. The Genghis Mark 1 is an if I have to, definitely. Um, 
I just don't like it as, as much as the Genghis. I think it, like, they purposefully made it, like, big and clunky and not as, like... I don't know. I don't want to say that it's not as strong as the Genghis because it has more armor. Like, it's like a more armor, more slow version of the Genghis. Um, it's, its core powers are different, so, you know, it's all good. Um, the Enkidu and the Genghis, spoiler alert, come from a come from no room for a wallflower and they are ancient mechs that were like buried away um they're basically like um experimental mechs and that's why it's it's the other way around right even though we got the to chronologically in our world we get the tokugawa and the genghis first they actually had predecessors and actually the genghis mark one is the very first mech ever created so it actually predates the Everest as like literally the oldest mech in the game per the lore. And now the Barbarossa. It's fitting to end with the Barbarossa as it is the largest mech, the only size 3 mech you can start the game with. Um, and we are going to put that up here. Yeah, maybe you thought that I wouldn't want to because it's so slow and clunky or that I wouldn't want to at all, but no. The Barbarossa is cool, you know. It's like if you play a if you play a Barbarossa and you're playing a long-term game, you you definitely might want to consider having a secondary mech that you run, right? If you if your Barbarossa is your if you're using the Barbarossa to run like um, like Andromeda cannons or whatever, um, then you just have to be aware that if if you ever get into a mission that requires speed, you might have to switch to your Sherman version. Um, most sit reps, though, the Barbarossa can just slowly walk in the general direction of the objective while like just shooting massive weapons at the enemies. The core power of the Barbarossa is, you can barely see it here, but it basically has a railgun that is like a shipboard railgun, right? It's like probably not even the smallest gun that like a capital ship would have. So yeah, the Barbarossa, that thing does, when it charges up all the way, it does a ton of damage and like leaves a crater and like leaves like molten material around and smoke. It like, if you want a weapon that changes the battlefield drastically, uh, play a Cobalt. But if you want a weapon that changes the battlefield drastically once every four turns, then play a Barbarossa. Uh, so that's it. That was the Lancer tier list. Um, you know, you guys obviously here in the chat are free to comment. If you're watching this on YouTube la later, feel free to tell me why I'm wrong and why I should really actually be into the Napoleon and the Lancaster. Um, Again, you know, not no offense meant here. This is just kind of what I like and what I'm interested in. As you can see, you know, a pretty good mix. Except actually, yeah, one hairs and armory mech made it to to my top tier. Um, but you know, this second tier, the tier of like mechs that I would very gladly play, is the largest one, and that's true for Lancer. Like Lancer has like Lancer has just such an impressive amount of fun playable options right like there's lots of options you know obviously there's lots of people who love the options that i don't like but most of its options are very good you know it's like there are things like in other games i probably would never play a sherman but it's fun it's fun to play it you know like same thing with like even these guys down here like if i have to i'll play them and who knows maybe i would prioritize them more if I saw more of them in play. Um, you just never know. Uh, Skippy says, great list. Thank you. It's everything I wanted and more. Oh, okay, yeah. That's great. Uh, Billy says, the Death Star laser on a personal scale. Yes. Pretty much. Uh, Horse One Mind says, very good spread across the board. I think so in terms of each category. Uh, Skippy says, the Pegasus being on top rank is right and correct and everything else is good too. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mazer says, uh, I'm just happy for the IPSN and specifically Nelson. Yeah, yeah, IPSN did just fine. I, I like a lot of IPSN mechs. Yeah, definitely. Good times. 
Well, glad you guys joined me for that. And, uh, yeah, more content coming up. That's just kind of an outro for, for, the, um, for the YouTube video. Uh, let's see. What do we want to do now? Do we want to go back to folding laundry? That sounds fun. Movie magic. Yeah, I, I guess actually we could try to you guys want to do try and do some YouTube content uh, Let's see what I have here <clears throat> Dude do, do, do. Uh, what am I looking for? Where are my captions? Oh, my captions are working. Okay. All right. Give me one second. You guys want to do some, help me do some YouTube content? I'll, I'll tell you what you guys need to do. Just give me a sec. Okay. Um, what I need you guys to do is, uh, so I'm going to do some like, uh, closes for the YouTube channel. And what I need you guys to do is to type things like, hi, YouTube. And I can't believe I'm on YouTube and, uh, like, uh, you know, stuff like that. Hi, mom. Um, like go Lopez family variety channel. Also, if you want to use the like hype and, and pog um, commands, that works too. Um, just trying to get like a, like a distractingly, yeah, like a distractingly fast, yeah, stuff like that. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna count, count in. So I'm gonna go three, two, one. When you guys hear that one, you start, yeah, you start doing stuff like that. Poggers, I'm on TV, hi YouTube. Um, so yeah, all right, you guys ready? Get you, go ahead and type out your first phrase and then you can just hit enter. Yep, definitely Pavlov, uh, surprise Pavlov uh, is, is good as well. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Oh, hey, thanks for sticking around uh, till the end of the video. I really appreciate that. Um, if you don't mind, if you could like and subscribe the video, that would be really helpful. And if you can leave a comment, that would be mwah, extra super helpful. Thank you for watching. Good job. Good job, everyone. All right. Let's do it one more time. And I'll give you, I'll give you guys a little bit, uh, a little bit more time. To, to start up because I think the, the lag kind of slowed everyone down. <laughs> All right, here comes the next one. You ready? And we'll count. Yeah, so I'll count down to one. You guys start up and um, I'll give I'll, I'll wait a little bit longer to start. All right, three, two, one. Yeah, video is over. Don't forget to like them, subscribe them, and give that bell a ring a ling so you don't miss a thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good video. Good video, everyone. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's, that's always helpful. And uh, if you could leave a comment, just tell me about your day. Just, just tell me about your day down there. Good times. <laughs> Ring the bell. He doesn't feed us without it. That's great. Uh, all right. What else? Um, like, hey, if you haven't checked out our Twitch channel, uh, you should. It's twitch.tv slash elpikachon. You get to hang out with these guys. They're good times. They are. 
All right, good times, guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that you're, you're like, you guys are you guys are real good sports, and uh, you'll probably your comments will probably end up on the YouTube channel like in perpetuity. Poggy Woggy. Yep, you always stay on topic too. No uh, hashtag Big Chicken. Yep, that's a good one. Ask not for whom the bell tolls. It's supposed to be for whom. Okay. Nice. All right. So, yeah. Uh, you know, guys, feel free to shoot. What, like, is there something you guys want to talk about? We already talked about Lancer, so we can't get derailed talking about Lancer now. That's right. Don't forget to save your games. That's important. Yes, give me my butthole. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. What's the Rodrigo take on Monster Hunter? I like... I mean, when I, whenever I see Monster Hunter stuff, I definitely like what I see. But I am just so bad at, like, dodge roll type games. Not dodge roll the company, but, like, yeah, games where you have a weapon and you have to time enemy attacks and, like, flip over and you have to time your own attack so that you're not, you know, mid-animation and get hit. Like, I am just so fundamentally bad at those games um, that uh, that I'm like, yeah, that game looks fun, but I, I know that me playing it is actually not going to be fun or, or not as much fun, and I'll probably end up leaving it in the middle. So, you know, I'm, I'm cool. I don't have any problems with it. I'm just like, yeah, this game I would be very bad at. Uh, Skippy says, honestly, MH is probably one of the more forgiving versions of a dodge roller. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, I like. I, I think in the latest one, you can have a sidekick cat and a dog you ride around on. So, I mean, that, I'm down for that. Maybe I'll check it out. It's like my Donald Duck shirt. Just showing it quickly because I don't have the rights to show you Donald Duck. So... I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to blur that if it goes to YouTube. Although I guess I show you the Muppets, and they're owned by the same company, the same company that owns Marvel superheroes and The Simpsons. Uh, Skippy says you can also slingshot yourself across the map. Okay. Harvey says for what it's worth, Rodrigo, I usually feel the same, and it's one reason I steer clear of Soulsborne games. Though I got a decent handle on Monster Hunter. And the slower pace and heft of the combat is super satisfying compared to fewer frame combat games. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I, 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 I believe you. I think I'll... I instead of just feeling sad that I'm never going to be good at a Monster Hunter game, maybe I'll try it out. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to play a demo of a Monster Hunter game. So, I I'll keep an eye out. Maybe I can get it at, like, a thrift store and just... Uh, or, or if it's ever on sale, but I don't know if those, I don't know if those games are ever on sale. Harvester says my partner also endorses playing Monster Hunter after playing for a few years and only recently learning to dodge. Oh well, there you go. I, I guess that's that's a big endorsement as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so I said. I said that I wasn't going to show you my wife's clothes, but I'm going to show you this one. So in Seattle, there's a like crabbing is a thing. You know, people just like throw crab traps and you get crab and you eat it. Um, so they also sell these like novelty shirts. And I'm sure they do in like Louisiana and stuff. I'm sure these are like are like up in like. New England. I'm sure they have those too, but I think these are funny. So she got one that's breaking crab. Right? You can see the crab outline back here, but it's breaking crab. And then I got this one. That's our, our novelty crab shirts from, from living in Seattle. 
Uh, let's see. Um, Skippy says, honestly, if you can do combos in a fighting game, you can do combos in Monster Hunter. I believe there are still demos of Rise out there. Okay. Harvest says, and not to uh, push to change your position or anything, just giving you input. And also, MH Rise does have a demo on Switch. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll try it out. I, I bought all of Coromon just to try it, so I, I'll definitely try a demo. Um, Senjido says, ah, catching as opposed to walking sideways. Yeah, catching crabs, yeah. Harvest says, partner, OMG, Rodrigo should name his character Gohan if he's not learning to dodge. <laughs> okay. Um, Skippy says, I think you can get a copy of Monster Hunter World for about $6 these days. Very beginner friendly. Okay. Harvest says, ba Breaking Crab is very good. Is it a Maryland shirt? I missed a part of that. No, it's a, it's a Seattle thing. Like, but, but I am sure you can get a completely identical shirt in Maryland, right? Any place where, where crabbing is a thing, you can get, I, I'm sure these are not like... Yeah, these are like novelty shirts. I'm sure like some big company, like some random company makes them and then they just ship them out to places along the coasts that are big on crabbing. So I'm sure there's a Maryland version of it. Yeah. Uh, did you watch any of Evo? I didn't watch any of the matches because I was working. Um, but I did see most of the trailers that came out of Evo. So still excited for Street Fighter VI. Um, you know, excited for new Guilty Gear DLC, but right now I'm not playing Guilty Gear, just like I'm not playing Magic, because I, um, I kind of ended up having, like, anxiety issues for other things, but playing randos online, I've talked about this before, playing randos online really exacerbates my anxiety. Um, if I'm playing with friends, that's fine. If I'm playing my wife or, like, my siblings or my nephews, that's not a problem. But, yeah, for some reason, playing randos really, like, it, it gets me tense enough that it triggers this, like, general anxiety thing that I've been dealing with. Um, so I had to stop. I had to stop playing fighting games online. I'm excited about Street Fighter VI because it seems to have maybe a, a more thorough... Um, like single player game it's like mortal kombat 11 has a lot of stuff that you can do as a single player so i was happy to like very rarely would i play that online like there was always stuff to do um yeah there was always stuff to do for single player guilty gear there kind of isn't just not as much so you know, I'm kind of just not playing Guilty Gear Strive right now, but I am excited for it. If I ever, you know, if I'm ever able to get like a handle on this anxiety thing, um, I would, I would love to get back into Guilty Gear. Uh, Little Billy says, my brother just moved out to Seattle. Gonna have to make a trip out to visit for the holidays this year. That's cool. Um, have you ever tried Skullgirls? I haven't played Skullgirls, but it looks really good. I'd be, I would be willing to, to try it out. Uh, Harvester says the stream has pushed me. This stream has pushed me closer to investigating Lancer. By the way, it's been very informative on aspects I can grasp at a glance, which is great for giving me an impression of an RPG. Yeah, and that's and that's what I was going for, right? I wasn't gonna get into like at no point, at no point did I get into like frame traits, right? It's like. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, it's like, at no point was I like, yeah, this thing has 10 hit points, 8 evasion, a minus 2 tech attack. Like, I know that that stuff doesn't mean anything to most people that are, like, just sort of casually getting into it. And it doesn't mean much to me, right? It's like, some of these things are included in the general stuff that I talked about. In that I'm like, well, you know, this frame I like, but, or I, I like its systems better. It's like, that includes some of this stuff. But, but not that much. Um, Zal says, I gave up on MTGA months ago. I did too. I stopped playing Magic for the same reason. Because you kind of have to play with randos. Um, I just got tired of it. And I, and, and I got anxious. I would get anxious anytime I played. Um, interestingly... 
the like streaming Magic the Gathering makes me less anxious because I think because my mind is occupied on something else. I'm talking to you guys. Um, but but I, I, I don't like it's like I can't risk that. Right. It's like having an anxiety attack is not good. It's not good for me. Pushing through an anxiety attack is not helpful to my body. Right. So that's why I kind of don't do magic anymore. Um, again, I think that, you know, if I streamed a few games of magic and I was just talking to you guys, it, it would probably be OK. But it's, you know, for magic content, it's not worth risking. Like, and I'm not established as a magic creator. Like if I was like a famous magic guy and I was like, I can't play magic anymore. Yeah, that would be terrible. And it would like, you know cost my channel but like you guys are as into magic as any other thing right like collectively the people that come to watch me are you know might be into magic might not you know they get i'm very you know open to explaining things if you're not into something so it's all good uh let's see uh skippy says do you think we'll ever actually get tekken 8 i don't uh, maybe i don't know um, MTG is a poison I finally removed from my system. Almost ruined my life. Yeah, I mean, it was it was actively being harmful to me. Um, just because of the way it works, but yeah. Uh, Harvest says, maybe having company helps to offset the randos anxiety. I think so. Uh, Skippy says, what does a shooting video game need to do to grab Rodrigo's attention these days? Whew. It needs to, like, the last shooting video game I played was Overwatch. And Overwatch made a lot of promises, some like the majority of which it cashed. Um, it was like, this game, you can have people that are really good at first person shooters and also beginners. And that's true. You know, you have characters like Winston or Symmetra or um, eventually, uh, well, anyway, you have characters like Winston and Symmetra who don't need to aim, right, for example. Um, so, yeah, basically something that looks as fancy as Overwatch did and promises me that I don't have to be good at it. Um, so almost nothing. You know, I'm not interested in Borderlands. I'm not interested in um, definitely not like Call of Duty or like Fortnite or... Um, PUBG or any of that is just not interested in it. It takes a very specific thing to make me interested. Before Overwatch, the last first-person shooter game I had played was Portal or Portal 2. So that's 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 how you can tell that I like basically don't play shooters. Um, let's see. Zal says, yeah, ruined my favorite format and whatnot. Just decided if I'm going to buy cards, there will be real cards to play Commander with friends. I feel that totally. Um, MTG is commander with my friends nowadays, says NJW. Totally. Uh, Skippy says, this is a nice group of well-rounded weirdos. Yeah, I like that. I like that, you know, some of you got, like, almost anything that I bring up, some of you are like, I'm familiar with that. And some of you are like, I've never heard of that. So it's great. Like, I feel like I'm bridging that. You know, I'm introducing people to new things. And also, I'm like, I also, you know, try to talk about, like, you know, games that interest me. Um, so it's like, yeah, talking about Lancer, like Lancer is a strong game in the, in the RPG sphere, but so many people, so many people that would love Lancer don't know it. So I'm like, I'm just going to create some Lancer content and, and see if I can introduce Lancer to more people. Um, little Billy says, I used to play a fair bit of arena casually, but working at a place I could play over lunch regularly really helped me quit. Working at a place I could play over lunch regularly really helped me quit. Oh, okay. Zal says, a game I've been waiting to come out for months releases tomorrow. That's that's fun. Uh, any thoughts on Project L from Riot Games? It looks good. Like, I don't I don't play League of Legends. I've never played League of Legends. Um, <laughs> sometimes when I talk to people, I'm like, well, I've never played League of Legends. And people are like, oh, oh, good. <laughs> It's like apparently I would I would be a lot more like opinionated and like angry about Project L if I had played League of Legends, but I haven't. So I'm like, cool. It's it's interesting that they're going for a tag fighter, right? Like a tag based fighter like Marvel vs. Capcom. 
Um, but yeah, it looks okay. It looks good. Uh, you know, we, we don't know much about it. And League of Legends has a colossal roster, so they have tons of stuff to draw from. Uh, Harvester says, ooh, my partner recommended Power Wash Simulator as a chill-out serotonin building game. Okay. <laughs> uh, Sinjadoli says, my Lancer knowledge has expanded. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Dreadwolf7 says, I'm pretty sure I love Lancer. Haven't played it yet, but I'm fairly confident. Yeah, Lancer's a good game. It's good times. Skippy says, I bought that big itch. Uh, oh, itch.io bundle uh, near the start of quarantine, so I just own Lancer now, apparently. Yeah, yeah, I did too. That's how I got Lancer. That's how I got, like, Blades in the Dark, which I still haven't read, but I've been meaning to. Um, Lil Billy says, play Paper Magic with my coworkers. I just skipped train of thought halfway there. I see what you're saying. So you stopped playing Arena because you could play with your coworkers. I gotcha. Uh, Malone says, that's me. Never heard of Lancer. Turns out it looks right up my alley. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zal, Zal says, also Power Wash Simulator is very chill. Okay, yeah, I'll look into it. Harvester says, MTG in person should be called Up Close Magic the Gathering. Up Close Magic the Gathering. Am I missing something here? Like, is that a pun or something? I, I, I missed it, sorry. Um, Skippy says, I think Project L might be the biggest fighting game ever. People will flock to a Riot IP, even if they don't care about the genre. People watch hours of Valorant and know nothing about the game or lore. Okay, interesting. Zal says, "I love." Uh, Zal says, "Have you seen Cult of the Lamb, Rodrigo?" I saw. I saw the trailer around. I didn't click on it. Is it? Is it? Does it look good? Up close magic is a style of magicianry. Oh, 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 oh! I see. So it's like a Chris Angel type thing, where where he mind freaks you. Uh, Sinjadoli says, I've watched a Blades in the Dark series on YouTube. Seems like a cool system. It does. Actually, it's funny because um, you can tell when in the publishing history of Lancer, the guys from Lancer read Blades in the Dark, right? Because Blades in the Dark is all about clocks, right? It has a lot of, like, a action clocks. Um, and... Uh, all of a sudden, in, in, in an expansion, clocks show up, and it's like, you should use clocks. And I'm like, oh, like, between this expansion and this expansion, these guys read Blades in the Dark. <laughs> um, Zal says it looks very good. You should check it out. Harvest says it was a silly pun. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, I, I haven't checked out um, Cult of the Lamb, but, but I'll look into it. Uh, as far as... Project L being the biggest game ever. It could be. You know, right now we're looking at like multiverses. Like multiverses release some numbers. And it's like the it's like the biggest known amount of people playing a, like a, a fighting game at once. Right? And partially people suspect that Smash has had more. Um, but Nintendo doesn't release their numbers, so they can't they can't claim that crown if they don't release their numbers, right? So, uh, yeah, right now Multiverses is doing really good. People really like it. Um, people are responding very well to it. You know, Project L could be something like that, especially could, because it's going to tap <clears throat> a different sector of the population. And then, yeah, there's a difference between a game that is hot, like highly played versus a game that's like popular. Like, um, you know, something like Fortnite is both highly played and popular. Um, something like Street Fighter, it's probably more played than it is popular, right? Um, I don't know. I don't have the numbers for this. Maybe I shouldn't. I shouldn't comment. Uh, Skippy says, "I've read Blades. I think it'd probably be a great series for the podcast." Uh, you get to retcon your prep phase and take exhaustion to solve your problems. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Sinjadoli says, I actually put a lockpick in my back in my pack before the job. And ta-da, here it is. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, Harvester says, oh, I did recently dig out my 3DS and have been replaying Pokemon Conquest. It has some pretty cool aspects and satisfying tactical crunch. Yeah, uh, you guys have mentioned Pokemon Conquest before. I did not even know that game existed. So uh, maybe I should look into it. 
Heart says, I would really dig if they made a new conquest incorporating more of the new Pokemon material. Sure. Skippy says, and when you pick the lock, you find two guards standing on the other side. Well, when I was infiltrating this place earlier, I hide a cudgel next to this doorway. Nice. Take two exhaustion. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a that's something that like that's good because that's that's a a factor of like heist movies that that games aren't very good at doing, right? It's like Shadowrun is a game in which you do heists constantly, right? Every game of Shadowrun is very likely a heist. Um, so yeah, this this idea of like a scene like in Ocean's Eleven where they are simultaneously telling you the plan and you see in the future like intercut with like scenes of them enacting the plan is something that role playing games have always struggled to to do, right? If you see something like Shadowrun, Shadowrun is chronological. Anything you didn't bring, you didn't bring, right? Um, but but something like this where you can be like, okay, well, I like let, let's rewind to the planning scene. You know, it's like, oh, there's going to be two guards here. It's like, oh, I better I better bring my guard spray. Um, you can you can do that. Yeah. So that's that's good. That's great that there's a game that that emphasizes that sort of play. Um Harvester says, oh, Skippy says, oh, yeah, that was a lock picking. Hard says, yeah, I bought it up a few streams ago. Uh, it takes some doing. Zemzi says, it takes some doing to get Blade's inventory system. Okay. Skippy says, look into perfect legal PC version of Pokemon Conquest uh, before the tech run, the game, and the physical copy itself are insane right now. Okay. Uh, Baluey says, I've only played video games. The video game Shadowrun is based on are the race maximum still a thing? I really hate I couldn't play a Decker Troll. I don't know about the latest version of Shadowrun, but the last version of Shadowrun was the second to latest version. And in that, they. I think they did still have maximums. No, maybe they didn't. I think, I think maybe they've done away with maximums. You just start really far behind. It's like instead of everything starting at like five or wherever it starts, you like maybe start at zero or like one. So, um, Harvester says, "Do heist the Ramstein hit? Is that anything? I keep workshopping it. I think you can. I think you can get it. Then time travel back to like 1999 or whenever that song came out, and it's gonna it's gonna slay." Uh, Sigidolo says anti-guard bat spray. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Skippy says Blades is a great game for improv our peers. Yeah, it sounds like it. I again, I've just, you know, we're we're gearing up for a new game uh, on Critical Hit. And before that, you know, I kind of had to get into um, uh, Starfinder. And, and also Lancer just occupies so much of my mind. And also I'm running an Exalted game. So there's just like a section of my brain that's like portioned off for Exalted. So like maybe I'll start reading Blades once we stop playing Starfinder. And then I'll, I'll have like a little bit of RAM free to, to start getting into it. Um, Sigidolo says, I played the OG Shadowrun. Was fun for the time? Sure. Uh, Skippy says, Dragonfall and Hong Kong are definitely worth playing. You can usually get the whole series in a bundle for not a ton of money. Yeah, you, you mean the the video game Shadowruns. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. I played... Um, I played uh, Dragonfall and then, like, the Berlin expansion. Is that... Is that... That's all the same thing, right? Uh, those new Shadow Rooms computer games, yeah, they're they're fun. I, I really enjoy them. Um, there's a character. Is like there's a character that has like the coolest background I've ever heard in the in the like the main Shadow Run game. I forget what her name is. I think it might be Mercy, but yeah, like the Street Samurai has like the most hardcore like Shadow Run background I've ever heard. It's actually it's really good. Um. Harvester says, hmm, not to decide if that punchline is worth all that work to make it flow or give up and convince myself it's nothing. Uh, only you can decide that. 
Uh, Lil Billy says, I got the Exalted TLDR just a month back or so, and it's still not fully sunk in how out there, how out there it gets. It gets very out there. Zal says, a harebrained games were all very good. Yeah. Uh, Zemzi says, the video game Shadowrun was a lot of fun, and yeah, all the same, but different places. Oh, glory, glory. Yeah. Um, Zemzi says, oh, I messed up with Mercy. Yeah, uh, Mazer's right. Her name is Glory. I knew it was some, like, ethereal aspect of, of humanity. But yeah, it's a Glory, not Mercy. Uh, Skippy says, Oh, content. Thoughts on the way on the new movie Prey, Rodrigo? I haven't seen it. Um, I don't have access to Hulu right now, so I haven't sat down to watch it. I, and I don't want to comment on it not having seen it, so... I mean, the premise looks good. I'm interested in that, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, thank you, though, for, for trying to, to make some like spicy content. I, I appreciate that. Harvester says, I played the Shadowrun Returns main campaign, and it was neat, though I wish there was more official content. I did play a user-created user mission where I made my character as Pitbull. As Pitbull as I could for laughs, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I also wish that they had put out more official content because, you know, the player content... You just never know how good it's going to be, right? Although, I did I did try to make some games with that engine, and it's not that the engine was bad. I just, like, gave up. Um, but, yeah, that was fun. Like, just doodling around with the with the tools that they gave you was pretty good. Oh, Zemsi says I messed up on her story mission. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, the whole Dragonfall crew is fantastic. I love them. Yeah, I, I seem to recall, like, they're just being, like, really good characters. Uh, Skippy says, first Comanche dub released same day ever. Big step. Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah, I just like... <laughs> I'm like, I'm out of I'm out of streaming service money. So I like Hulu fell off and we haven't gotten like a family member who has it to like give us the password. So, um, but yeah, good for them. I'm happy. I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't get a good groove for an original design in Monster Hunter for my PC, so I just made a guy. So I just made my leg look like Kratos. I mean that works. Uh, Pitbull surviving a zombie apocalypse or not surviving because I lost horribly was a fun premise to me. That's cool. Uh, Mazer says there's a UGC trilogy that starts with the Antumbra saga. That's really good. Okay. Uh, Baluy says I would love more RPGs based on Vampire the Masquerade. I, there's some coming soon, so. So, yeah, that's just scratch that itch. Although I think one of them, there were like two, and then like one of them got canceled and like maybe turned into something else. I don't remember. I stopped. I stopped following that at some point. I don't remember why. I just kind of had other things that I wanted to keep track of. But yeah, I want to say there's a there's a Vampire the Masquerade RPG in the works right now. Like a video game RPG. Yeah, it's been delayed. Speaking of vampire... What? <laughs> uh, Skippy says, any takes on all the VTM games they've been pumping out? I think they just did a Battle Royale. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm not interested. Like, I'm not interested in a Battle Royale. Like, I would be interested in, like, a first-person Vampire the Masquerade, like, you know, Skyrim, Fallout-type RPG game but other than that not really um, also I've kind of gone through a thing where I'm not really all that into Vampire the Masquerade anymore because like going back through and reading through the books I'm like what is the gameplay of this and I'm like yeah so much of it like involve it's like involves preying on people and there's like this natural way the book leads you into like you know the easiest people to prey on would be marginalized people. And I'm just like, I can't play this game anymore, you know? I, I don't know. Uh, maybe I could. But I'd have to be like a really, real baby. Like, I want to play a, I want to play a salubri kind of dork. Um, Zemzi says, a hunter's book was released. Oh, that's cool. A vampire, the actual masquerade. 
Uh, Baluie says, I would like more games on mummies and fey in the VTM world. Yeah, changelings were fun in, uh, in Vampire the Masquerade. I never played the mummy game, though, uh, as a tabletop RPG. Saint JW says, right, now to try and sleep in 20 plus degrees Celsius. Laters all. Good luck. Skippy says, it's nice to see a White Wolf property making money for the first time in like 15 years. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just haven't, haven't really been looking into them. Zal says, I got like both the recent dish VTM visual novels for like $5. That's good. Good job. Uh, Harvester says, yeah. Yeah, that definitely has a feel to it. Rodrigo rolls with a safety pyre. Yeah, safety pyre. Yep. Definitely. Um, yeah, I just like... There's something to the old world of darkness that is very, really very 80s uh, into the 90s. And I started playing Vampire at the 2000s, and already it seemed, like, weirdly whiny and privileged. You know, just, like, the general tone of it. And it's like, yeah, people in the 80s and 90s had, like, this idea of, like, a darkness and stuff. And it's like, but, like, that was a time when, like, the country was doing really good. So that's probably why. It's like, they're like, oh, there's not enough anxiety in my life, so I must pretend that I'm an angsty vampire um, so yeah I don't know I, going back and looking to that stuff I'm like oh I you know I don't want to like I don't want to play this game anymore I don't want to like I, we used to be like yeah players will like come in and they will just want to be like okay I feed and we'd be like no we're running a feeding session because feeding sessions can go wrong um, and I don't think that we, like, traumatized any players. I do believe that the reason why most of them didn't want to run them is because of that reason, right? They just wanted to, for us to be like, okay, you, you safely get this much blood. And the reason why I say us is because I ran a vampire LARP, and so there were, like, multiple storytellers, um, like, running multiple scenes. So, um... So, yeah, but, like, now when I think of it, I'm like, oh, I would hate to run a feeding scene. Like describing like someone like screaming and trying to get away and you still like overpower them and eat them like i don't know i, I i'm just not that interested in that uh again not to say if you like vampire the masquerade you know go for it but yeah just for me i just become such a softy um but louis says the us the visual novels were actually very good that's cool uh skippy says oh what's the vibe on digimon they just put out a visual novel so, v Digimon Survive, I am interested in. It's, like, half visual novel, half, like, tactical RPG. Like, it actually has, like, spaces and movement and stuff. So, I am interested in that. So, that's something that I might pick up if it goes on sale. Um, but I don't know much about Digimon. Uh, Lil Billy says, if you ask me about 80s vampires, my brain starts replaying Los Boys. Yeah, that's, that, that, you know, that was a big influence on Vampire the Masquerade. Baluie says, uh... I would like to play a non-evil wad vampire that sees people n not just as subhuman. Well, that's the issue with it. Is that, that's actually one of its... That's one of the themes. The themes is you can try to maintain your humanity, but you're ultimately lose, right? It's like the, the monster inside you is eventually going to win. They're all mechanics like erode your humanity trait right so you can play that character and you can hold on to that but the game itself exists to 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 pull you down from that to experience that right that's that's like that's what people wanted out of that game is they wanted to experience that angst like actual genuine angst at at you know having to shed their humanity to survive and like that's a uh, that's a fair theme those are good themes you know, just like, I'm just not very interested in them now. Um, Malone says, yep, super 90s stuff. Lil Billy says, footnote, wasn't even alive for the 80s. Yep. I was, but I wasn't cognizant for a good chunk of it. Skippy says, that darkness was entirely filled with white characters too. Yeah. Or, or terrible stereotypes, right? Because, man, if you look at vampire clans that are not entirely made of white people... It starts to it starts to get iffy. Uh, Malone says 90s wasn't bleak enough, so kids had to find it from fantasy. Sure, yeah. Skippy says the vampire LARP episodes might be some of my favorite old MSP episodes. Yeah, like the episodes where I talk about the vampire LARP, because I don't think we ran a vampire LARP. 
Um, Harvester says, you could always play I Only Feed on Bad People Vampire. Yes, but again, the game, literally the game is set up to trip up, to trip that up, right? Like, that's one of the themes. One of the themes is you go in, you, you're, you're a person. You're still a person. You just have this, like, hunger. And eventually the hunger gets the best of you. And you have to deal with that. And again, it's very cathartic if you're playing in a game like that. Um, that that hits all of those themes, but that's the deal. It's like you can't, you know. It's like in D and D, you can be like, I play a ranger that only uses hammers. It's like you can do that. Nothing's forcing you to use a hammer or to to use a sword. But it, that's not the same as like I play a vampire that only feeds on bad people. Because first off, you have to find the bad people, right? What if you're super hungry and you can't find a bad person right now, right? That's that's literally what the game is meant to, to do. Um, Skippy says the end game of White Wolf is everyone ends up as a bad guy in Blade. <laughs> yeah. Well, the end game end game for for White Wolf originally is everybody dies in the apocalypse. Um, but Louis says I could do with less angst. Yeah, I, I, totally. Zal says I have a couple of VTM choose your own adventures on my phone too. Yeah, I mean Vampire the Masquerade is a fun property. Again, I'm just like I'm just not at a place where I want to play it, but I had a lot of fun playing it when I was in college. Like definitely enjoyed it and wouldn't tell somebody like, "No, don't play this. It's bad." Like it's fine. But Louis says uh Laybon and Quay Jin can be very iffy. Ah, uh, yeah, super iffy. I mean, just like followers of Set and Asamites are iffy, and those are not even like uh, those are kind of core clans by by Vampire Revised. Uh, Skippy says, yeah, way back in the double digits, you and Matthew would talk about vampire LARPing and RPG stories very before Critical Hit. Okay, all right. All right, well, I've really enjoyed talking to you guys, but I should probably wrap this up. Um, I really appreciate you guys uh, being around while I do my laundry. Um, here's some shorts. So I really appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate you guys uh, sticking around for Lancer stuff. I know. I know you came here for laundry, but I appreciate you guys putting up with Lancer stuff. Um, and I really, really enjoyed hanging out, talking to you guys. It's good to do like just like a big old just chatting stream. I know that the, um, the premise here is that you play video games and people watch you play video games. But I'm terrible at video games and I mostly just enjoy doing the chat. So I think it's all good. Um, so yeah, thanks so much guys. And, uh, oh, no stream next week. I'm going to be on vacation, but I'll come back the, the week after that. So thank you so much and I'll catch you guys later.